<laughs> Hello and welcome to the third episode of Fuck That's Loud. Fuck That's Loud. Yes, yes, yes. And as you usually start this, how is everybody with how everybody? No, 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 no. There's uh, another way to introduce it. It's my name is Hub MP. Oh shit. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm Hiram P, also known as Nigel, and we've also got... My name is Triple Sixteen, aka Condog, aka Big Man Morris, aka Condog. Oh, oh shit, it's me. What's up, Punk Specials here, I'm okay, Ben. I haven't actually announced my actual name on here. <laughs> <laughs> my name's Ben, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> the dreaded warlock. But um, yeah, now we've got our in- <laughs> little introduction bits done. So how actually was your week? Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, my week's actually been all right to be fair. But you know, back in the swing of work and yeah, I'm, 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 I'm all good, man. I'm all good. Uh, working on some tunes this week. I've uh, been watching quite a lot of Louis Ferrou this week, which has been pretty yeah, enjoyable. So- uh, yeah, yeah, there's not really a lot else to report at the moment, to be fair. Listening back to Fuck That's Loud, and obviously thank you very much to everybody that has been listening. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a very uh, enjoyable experience for us to sort of get feedback from everybody. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's wicked. What about yourself, Nige? Uh, literally pretty much exactly the same as you. Work, editing the podcasts, dramas here and there with the podcasts. Other than that, just chilling, really. Not made any new music recently. Uh, mm. Everything I plan to do this summer is now out. Yeah. Which I'm stoked about. Yeah. If you haven't checked it yet, check it out on Sabotage Audio, Hybrid MP, everything up like this summer. Yay. But yeah, so, oh, yeah. And yeah, so we'll ask yeah, you as yeah. well. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, right. uh, yeah, man, just working on a bit of music. Have my uh, masters come back from my drum and bass EP. Oh, man. That's just gone out on mail out on promo. Uh, and it'll come, uh, be coming out soon, but I have, I'm not telling you when yet. Oh, oh, have you actually got a date now, have you? I have, yeah. yeah. Oh, sick. It's in the pipeline. Got the date. Got the date is it so. before or after summer? Probably before, isn't it? Before or uh-huh. after summer? Yeah. Yes, yeah, before. That's summer, a little bit of a while. Oh, yeah, no, because then I can see which segment of the year it's going to sit. Is we've it going to be the first half? Is it going to be a quarter? Yeah. We've seen the full package now, though. We've seen the artwork. We've seen everything. And it is looking, yeah. to all the people at home, it is looking <laughs> rather bloody banging. That is what I will say. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so last podcast. How do you guys feel like the last podcast, West? Oh, the podcast, go on now. I feel like I'm half asleep. I feel like I've just woken up. I think it's because I've been inside my house all day. You've been I'm smoking not, too I'm, much I'm, weed, haven't you, Nigel? I, mean, I don't do such things. What do you, uh, what do you think of this? You're a naughty boy. <laughs> no, 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 no. But yeah, how do you feel like I'm the last podcast? I, I actually Zura. really, really enjoyed the last podcast. Yeah. I think Zero was a great guest to have on. He, he's Good just, man. he's very easy to chat to, isn't he? He was yeah. very, very sort of... Uh, Natural. Yeah, he is a natural, you know. Yeah, he does it. love to talk. He's exactly yeah, the same as us, and he yeah. can go on and on and on and on. But you know, it's, it makes our job a lot easier, doesn't it? When you've got someone like that in in the situation that sort of you know bounces back with you as as much as you can, which hopefully yeah. we'll get off of our guest today. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm sure we will. I'm sure we will. Yeah. So um, yeah, the one thing we wanted to do from the uh, the last podcast, uh, sort of reflecting back, is uh, afterwards uh, our good friend Zero put up a photo uh, of the all of us the gang uh, together oh, yeah. and he captioned it saying who are these four wrong answers oh, only God. and and the order that we stood in so far left we've got Ben with the dreads to the right of Ben we've got Connor with the beard and tentacles I got right, to the right of Connor we've then got me uh, black uh, just, <laughs> <laughs> then we've you got what, me sorry? and then um, on the are far you? right we've got um yeah, we've got zero. So that's the order we sort Big of stood man. in. So we're going to look at some some of the uh, some of the uh, comments that came through on. on his I feed. haven't actually checked these. I've saved it because when when we oh, came up with the it. idea, I saved it to, to to sort of look at the time. Yeah, let's have a look. Oh god. So right. the, the first one on top was the black eyed peas. Uh, there, there's a black guy there's a black guy well, there's black no eyed Fergie peas. there really there is, is a black, is there eye, a black, black guy in the black eyed peas here I am is literally the oh black eyed peas God. I'm going back home he is the black eyed peas my brain's peas. not working so oh, coming, coming on to the next one there's there's a fire emoji I don't know how that's going to work no um, then the next one after that is the Beatles the which Beatles. once again I don't really know how that's going to yeah, work yeah. No, yeah, I mean uh, which one are you Nigel <laughs> I know there's a, no, it's, cause it's like left to right isn't it where is it George Where's Harrison, that? I think, for me. They've actually said from left to right. Yeah. George is left. So that's you. <laughs> You're the hippie, yeah, dreaded one. I know you. John is me. I'm quite privileged to have been called John Lennon. To be fair, and who am I? You're Paul McCartney, and Adam is the ugly Ringo. <laughs> <laughs> So he's been left in the situation of basically being called the worst drummer in the world. He's oh, not the worst drummer oh, in the world, but wasn't it the Beatles? They actually joke, said they joke. said that it's the yeah Ringo isn't even the, the yeah Ringo isn't even the best Wait, drummer. Did they have in the more Beatles. than one drummer? Did they? No, someone asked Ringo Starr no, whether or no. not he's the best drummer in the world, and John Lennon went back. He's not even the best drummer in the Beatles. Ah, I see, I see, I see. Uh, oh, okay. my, oh, there's another one. Mike Tyson, Tyson Fury, Tony Bellew. Why am I Tony Bellew? Um, Anthony Joshua. So that means Adams. Anthony Adams. Joshua. Anthony Joshua. 
You, got you want, Tyson, you want to Tyson, do, Tyson Fury? Mate. You actually look like Tyson Fury. I said that to you the other day, didn't I? I will fight any man. <laughs> I will take on any man. Oh, My father before me and his father before him. <laughs> <laughs> now, you could do a better Tyson Fury than that. I don't know if I can. I don't know. I think you can. I'm pretty sure I've heard you do a better one than no, that. No, my brother can. I'm not going to lie. He's, uh, he can, he can smash it. Whether or, not, whether or not I can, I, like, I don't think I can. That's probably as good as you're getting on this show anyway. Uh, the three wise men with Jesus on the left. Oh, so yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you. Are, yeah. You are I've basically. That one before. Yeah, I mean, that's George probably, Harrison and Jesus are the same. That's, that's people, probably my favourite one, I think, so far. Jesus. Uh, o Sinclair. Literally, someone has just commented the words in different letters Jesus. J E S U S. I Where don't know that? if that's all four of us are different versions of Christ, <laughs> or if, or if, uh, or if it's just you and they're just so I'm shocked at how much you look like Jesus Christ. Yeah, carry on reading them. I've got off that page now. <laughs> Swedish House Mafia and Zura. How the fuck do we look like no, Swedish I House Mafia? I don't even know what they look like. <laughs> Fine young criminals. Ah, uh, yeah, I'll take that. <laughs> under 18s, back four. <laughs> I don't even play soccer. No. Right, okay, so that's uh, so that's us looking at that. That's, uh, I'd say we've definitely covered that. Released Hostages is another one. Uh, Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young. Uh, Anybody? Uh, I don't know who that is. Does it, uh, does it, people, I guess they're nodding, uh, and I don't actually have a clue who these people are. Yeah, uh, but yeah. The best they, one, what, do you, what do you think the best one was? The uh, Jesus. I one. would. I, yeah, I think the Jesus on its own. <laughs> Just uh, whoever commented Jesus, I think is a fucking great shout. Um, the Jesus one, and you look like Tyson Fury as well. So that, I will that, fight any man. That, that I will take on any man. Is that, was, that was shit, mate. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm no, leaving I'm it there. I'm, I'm not sure taking this any further than, than it needs to be. But um, yeah, that's that on the Zero Recap. Right, Connor, do you want to introduce our guest this week? <sighs> I think it's a you. You need to press it on mute. Microphone. Press Obviously, it on mute. These guys, they just don't stop talking, so we had to make sure we muted the mic before they came on. So, right, That's guys. Good. My brain's not working. So, so these work. guys are uh, <laughs> they're some very good mates of mine. Um, right, okay, you're on mute now. So, they're, you're, uh, they're some very good mates of mine. Uh, we grew up in the same sort of area, uh, well, Cambridge. Uh, they are an amazing uh, acoustic duo uh, consisting of Christian Jones, aka Big C, aka Christ, and <laughs> Christ. Mr. Pollen, Thomas Pollen. They combined create. Just Edward. Welcome to the studio, Just Edward. Thank you for having us. Thank it's, you. It's quite alright. Talking to the bus up. <laughs> how the hell are we doing, boys? Yeah, all good. How, how are you? I yeah, mean, can't complain. We're here. Yeah, man. Can we just uh, can we just say that um, there's actually I think three black dudes in the Black Eyed Peas. Is oh, it? is there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well I thought done, there was Nigel. only two. No, because you got because the original Black Eyed Peas lineup oh. was the three black dudes and then the black girl that left. Can't remember her name. Fergie. No, sure, before I was Fergie. Fergie's Fergie. not black. That's why I was that? confused. No, no, no. I was going to question it. I think he's it. going so, back to before. So we're oh, talking about I'm not up to my. So if, when, when they were old school hip hop, if you listen to their first their first album, is full on old school hip hop. Really? They came from like um, came from Compton, I think, somewhere around. I think that's where they came from. Really? And they had this like they've got this amazing like old school hip hop album, and then um, this girl joined. And they got quite big, and then um, they started getting mainstream. And she left, and Fergie joined because they were like, "We don't want to go back to being poor and lonely. <laughs> <laughs> we're just gonna, we're just gonna go more mainstream because so then we're gonna, gonna make get... loads of money." Yeah, I, nearly, I nearly said the word. <laughs> what? what word do you think I was gonna say? Don't say it. No, I'm not gonna fucking say anything. I don't even know what you're <laughs> gonna worry, say. Don't worry. What, what, do, you, do you know what word I was gonna say, Christian? Oh, no, but I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't. Go think... back to being poor and being broke. <laughs> <laughs> not quite black. Oh, what? I don't know. I just popped it. I just thought that's what you were going to say. It's a Tupac lyric, isn't it? <laughs> is it? That is from Changes, yeah. Is it? Oh, really? Yeah. Well, Nigel doesn't actually listen to Tupac, do you? Nigel doesn't like old music. <laughs> no, I, I do. I like, some, I like some old music. I don't know. Old music. Nearly it's every your, time. your favourite old Oh, artist. God, no. It's all going to start falling apart now. Oh, actually... Oh, well, first of all, what would you consider to be Are old? we talking that's like pre ninety? We saying Little Mix is that? Pre- right? Oh my god, Little Mix! No, <laughs> yeah, that's a bit of me. That Little Mix, my <laughs> brother. Every time I put up, and fucking my other brother, this is every time I put up like an Instagram story or anything to do with music, like sharing, like you know when you like you know, I do these things, I think like who are your top five artists yeah, yeah. or whatever. Rory's always putting in there Little Mix, <laughs> Share, The Nolans. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like Otis Redding. Otis Redding's got good. He's yeah. old. That's old. That's He's Sam really Cook. good. Yeah. yeah. Do you guys do you know the Black Pumas? No. no. Oh, you ought to if you like Otis Redding, you ought to check out the Black Pumas. Oh, I'll check was, them out, yeah. yeah we talked was, about it on the last episode. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. You ought to check them out. I think you really like them. Well, we'll definitely check them out. Yeah. Otis so. Redding got shot, did you know? Did it? Who? Well, is that how we died? Shot on a balcony. Oh, it's Redding. Yeah, got, got shot got shot dead, yeah. I did not know this. So did Sam Cook. Yeah, so did Sam Cook. Shit. 
Really? I, I did feel, not I feel know like that. I'm going to yeah. get schooled this episode. I feel like I'm going to learn I feel like I'm going to learn a lot, well. which would be good because also my brain's not working. So hopefully you guys will fix will fix my brain. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm not going to lie. These guys are pretty damn uh, experienced in terms of music. Yeah, and you both look very, very clever Especially as well. Especially knowledge. you, Tom, with the glasses. Yeah, I've got a cardigan on as well, so... Oh, <laughs> he actually said when he walked in it, Christian's wearing a BHP jumper, which is our clothing yeah. brand, by the way. And Tom yeah. walked in, he's like, oh, yeah, I was going to wear my BHP jumper, but I thought I'd wear something better. <laughs> Fuck you, then. You've got to wear something bastard. nice when you're on a podcast, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> so funny. Oh, man. Right, okay. So, um, well, I guess we better just start talking about you guys a little bit. So, um, please, yeah. So, obviously, you uh, you both went to the same school as us, uh, Swayze Village College, and um, obviously, you're considerably older than us, Tom. It's actually uh, actually Tom wouldn't have been there when when you guys. No, yeah, he was there. I don't I don't there but funnily, he was there as a teaching assistant in the yeah. music class. I was a teaching assistant. Yeah, that's, yeah. yeah honestly, I was in, but I was only there for two weeks, mate. Yeah, you're on their placement, weren't you? Exactly. No, I was on a it was um, like work experience, my degree. Really? Uh, was that with Miss Caldwell or Miss Caldwell? Yeah, Miss Caldwell. Yeah. I was in year seven when Tom was in year 11, so. Yeah, we definitely really? wouldn't, yeah, I definitely yeah. wouldn't have been, well, we definitely wouldn't have been there. Yeah, so you were considerably older than, uh, older than <laughs> well, I will be 31 on the 13th of January. Bloody hell, well, so well there you go. I am. You're basically a fossil, nearly. <laughs> <laughs> what a nice thing to say. I bet that, was, that wasn't what you expected. I'm sorry, Tom. No, it's sorry. all right, it's all right. Take it back, <clears throat> take it back. I've, uh, I know his address. Oh. <laughs> what you gonna come do to me, huh? I'm I'm from the old school, mate. So uh, you can get a letter. Oh, a letter! <laughs> strongly worded one. Yeah. No, not too strongly worded. I won't be able to read it anyway. My brain's yeah, not working. Kids these days, mate. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So um, more so, what I was saying, sort of getting at with the um, sort of about you guys. So obviously that was the, the background. So we know you guys from school. Um, obviously Christian is a good friend of mine we grew up together in, in the same village we did um, but the reason you're actually on here is because you are both musicians and incredible mus- musicians at that oh, that's very kind of you to say well it's, it's so true. probably the better the <laughs> <laughs> Most, mostly me but some, mostly me because yeah, I remember seeing Diego. you for the first time live Tom and that was at the Admiral Vernon and you were playing ukulele absolutely years ago I'd never seen anybody play with a ukulele and kind of rap before Oh yeah, that uh, we used to do an open mic, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. years ago. That's when I used to live in over as well. Eight Pippin clothes, big up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I lived around the corner from you, yeah, Christian, as well. We pretty much lived on the same street. The street yeah. Oh my god! I remember um, someone actually saying to me, James Jared. Uh, do you, you know James Jared? Yeah. yeah. So, so he was saying to me about um, one time. He was like, "There's this bloody boy, this ginger guy, goes in the pub, plays fucking ukulele, and sings. I don't know what his <laughs> name is." I said. I don't fucking have a clue. And then eventually, as time went on, I sort of put the pieces together. I was like, oh, that must be Tom who we saw. That must be that Tom. That was a while ago, because that's when I obviously could be recognised by the colour of my hair. Yeah, well, now you actually have a shiny My top. hair just reflects whatever your hair is at this point. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like I was telling you before we started recording, the, um, when, I, when, I went, when he picked me up for, to come to this, I could see his head brighter than I could see the lamppost. Really? Yeah. <laughs> this, I'm not going to lie, mate. You can take it off, Tom. Come on. <laughs> it has got some shine to it, hasn't it? I quite like it. You look like a scientist. <laughs> yeah, I can't actually, you kind of look like the guy from cool. fucking Mythbusters. Oh, people do say that and also look like the bloke off that advert. Do you know the one? When I worked in the school, people used to, to say the advert back to me from the corridor. I'd be like, who's that? <laughs> what I can't remember what advert it is, but he's walking along. He's got purple suit on, ginger beard, bald head. <gasps> Uh, oh, I, don't I think I vaguely, like vaguely remember it. It sounds like a car. I think it's like an insurance advert or something. Yeah. Anyway, it's not important. Cause I'm <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to lie. I have absolutely no idea what advert you're talking about. No, I don't. No. <laughs> don't watch TV. No, yeah, I don't actually oh, anymore. I, I just watch Netflix. Yeah, I only listen to podcasts. So. Yeah, do you? That's why you're so good at it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Do you only listen to podcasts? No. Ah. No. <laughs> yeah. This is the first podcast I've ever listened to. I, I had to Google podcast before I got here. I'm 31 years old now. <laughs> <laughs> he just sticks to his letters. All I do, man. Yeah, so um, yeah, so obviously that's that's a little bit of background on you around here, but um, obviously your musical project. So obviously you're in a duo together between the two of you, which is just Edward now. It is, yeah. Um, <clears throat> we were uh, part of a four piece called Edward Alice before, and that's how we got our name as Just Edward. It can be lonely when it's harder to get a long term partner. I said, I just don't know what I'm gonna do. Well, if I'm through with love, well, then I'm through with you. And baby, that's just not an option. No, my heart's not for adoption. Everyone's a winner, baby, that's true. 
But in loving that can change and leave you hung out and wet through That's why I'll scream out to the sky and say it's not my time to die I will beg and steal and lie just so that you will all know why Because we um, we split up from the four piece and we started making music again. Obviously, Edward Alice, just the two of us now. So it's so. How did you Edward. get your name? So, well, for the, so obviously for there's Edward, Edward Alice, Alice and there's just Edward. Surely there's some correlation. So we there, got so. the name for Edward Alice. It was me and Tom and two other girls and um, the two girls. Their middle name was Alice. Our middle, our middle name is Edward. And yeah. All oh, right. See what sounds like two and two. Edward Alice. Oh, yeah, well, actually, I actually suggested it for a joke, the name, yeah, it out. <laughs> and he liked it. So. I quite like the name. I quite oh, like the sound good. of the name. Well, should we actually named it before our fourth member joined? And That's um, true. Yeah. her middle name was Victoria, but it was far too late. By the oh. <laughs> <laughs> Edward Alice Victor. No, it's not yeah. got a ring to yeah, it. There's no ring to that at all. It does have a ring there because it doesn't really because it doesn't sound like a person. It's, it sounds like a band, I think. Well, Edward yeah, Alice. Does, I think I'm yeah, talking yeah. about yeah. Edward Alice Victoria. Oh, <laughs> no, 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 that one no, don't quite work. Compared just as that, that sounds like a middle class family. <laughs> we did used to get a lot of um, replies to our emails. Hello, Mr. Alice. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, I mean, nice Tom. Edward Which Alice. one of you is Edward? Yeah, oh, really? Yeah. A lot of that, yeah. That's why I was a bit curious, sort of, obviously. So the, 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 just Edward and So obviously that's why you're now just Edward. Just Edward, yeah. Exactly. Okay, cool. So um, so how would you describe your sound to people listening at home? Um, uh, brilliant, I'd say. <laughs> this we're guy's just, ego <laughs> is something else, isn't it? No, I love the energy. <clears throat> no, we're, uh, we... We're acoustic, definitely. We're an acoustic house, just guitar and us singing. But we do um, we do a little bit like Nisloppy. Sometimes we like to do a little bit of rapping. Yeah, I love that. A little bit of everything with that, well, in, in the acoustic stream yeah. of genre. What's, yeah. your, what's your three biggest inspirations? Oh like in terms gosh. of your, in terms of your, like, in terms of how your sound is shaped. Because I've made some notes, and because I was listening to your EP earlier, I've made some notes on a couple of the tunes, but I'm not going to go into that just yet. Okay. But okay. what? How, how your sound is shaped? What? what like three I'm artists. I'm not going to lie. A lot of the songs that we do, Tom <sighs> writes the the most of the it. Body. And I, I, yeah, exactly. And I just kind of put a guitar part to yeah. it. Really, that's how we generally do it, isn't it? You've yeah, got, but you I have mean, more of an idea. We've been writing. And I just um, kind of. We've been writing together more like as a, as a team for the last. Well, since we've started this project, I think more of our stuff has been like together. But I suppose our, our influences are probably <clears throat> well. I've I've always listened to a lot of Nisloppy. Yeah, I know. I remember you saying that so before. So obviously, the one, the only song I know of theirs is is the JCB song. Yeah, well, that's a good oh, one. That's the only song anyone. Really yeah, knows. that's what I, I should really check yeah. more of her out. So you should, man. They're brilliant, and um, we've we together listened to a lot of like King Blues and Toots and the oh, Matles. They're King a lot of our favourites. Yeah. Yeah. Toots and the Matles, man. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, King yeah. Blues. I got King Blues from you because yeah, you showed man. Connor, and then Connor showed me. That's yeah, and I showed him. Oh, so. right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> true. We actually haven't heard this yet. Obviously, you listened to the first ever episode, but the second episode, Nigel actually chose that as his King Blues. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, so that's that's coming up to well, obviously you guys, but people at home will have already heard that. But um, yeah, the King Blues once again, check it out. But and there's Loppy tracks. What in his Loppy tracks would you say recommends people? I've got to say, there's a really good one called uh, Flooded Quarry. Okay, which mm. I, I've, I think that's probably one of their best ones. Is that new or old? No, well, Nisloppy, old, they? Nisloppy aren't together old. really anymore. They get back together every now and again for a couple of gigs and then go away again. So they've got like two albums and a couple of EPs. And then All My Life, because Ed Sheeran did a cover of that one. I was going to say, because he's quite heavily, they, they, they had quite a big part to play in his yeah. career, didn't well, they? Well, Ed Sheeran wrote a song for Nisloppy that you can still hear on YouTube and he sent it to them to try and get them to have him with them on tour. Right, okay. And uh, then they, they did in the end. No way. Yeah. I think Imagine I th that. I, I know, bet they're no laughing way. now. Yeah. They're texting him on New Year's Eve, thanks so much. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for the exposure, Ed. You really are a good old boy. They're sending him songs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Please, please, please sing this. But he does, Ed does do that, doesn't he? He gives royalties to like, so for example, Thinking Out Loud, you know how much that song was played. Yeah, of course. So he basically put one of his friend's names down as the songwriting credits on that song. So she gets royalties really? off of yeah. every single time it's played. I did not oh, know that. Yeah, well, which song, sorry? Uh, thinking Out Loud. Yeah. Baby, I oh, take see. me into your loving arms. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's exactly how it goes. Yeah, that's a strategy. Yeah. That was Ben, by the way. That was Ben Carmen. As soon as you start... As soon as you start singing that, I don't know why I just pictured John Lewis in my head. 
Yeah, it is a bit it's of a John Lewis. It's a very Advert John Lewis song, song, isn't it? Yeah, it is. A bit soft. Yes. <laughs> well, apparently Simon Cowell plays tambourine in all, a load of tracks so that he no, can play. No, was it? So I heard um, I, he, he when uh, One Direction were a thing, um, obviously Simon Cowell was their manager, wasn't he? So I heard that he plays one tambourine hit on every track on really? the album. Shut up. Mutes yeah, it. And then he gets recording credits. Fuck off. Fuck off. Surely not. Is that a myth or I, th- oh, I, I don't that's know? What I've I'm, heard. I'm going to investigate that. And he's I'll a clever you know. guy. I mean, I mean, he's ruthless. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah there is yeah, that. that. <laughs> there is that. Surely that is not real. I mean, Surely he no, makes I enough I wouldn't money be surprised anyway. That, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, but you greed, mate. Seems yeah, you've got yeah. money, you just want yeah, more. Also, look it's at the guy. Moorish, look at his face. It? He's holding on to every single thing he possibly can. <laughs> Literally. Simon Cowell puts you in an absolute gimp mask of a contract, though. Yeah. Whenever you sign up to him, he's like, right, uh, everything you do is mine. If you have a shit, put it in a, a sealable cup and let can it, sell it. <laughs> yeah. bring it over to me for vetting, just in <laughs> case there's any inspiration in there. That can suck it. They can feed it onto Little Mix yeah. and then they write songs about it. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Thanks, Rory. <laughs> Throw it at Adele's Shut boyfriend up. so she breaks up with him and we get another sad album. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is, she, is she signed to Psycho? No, I don't think she's signed to Psycho. She can't be. No, she's, she's too... Not. She's universal. She's she's something like that. She's, she's just unreal. I've got so much time for Adele. I think she's great. Um, but yeah, so yeah, that's a nice bit of bit to know about you, about your influences. Yeah. Um, so the next part of the show... Uh, which was well it's not the next part of the show we're just going to ease into it a little bit yeah um obviously we're fresh into the new year now um we're starting to get into the into the swing of things um but basically we're looking back on sort of how 2020 was do we want to look back Um, on how 2020 was well no but we're we're trying to sort of the reason we're doing it is sort of because everybody's had a lot of negative yeah which we are going to talk about (laughs) (laughs) but there is also some positives and we want to sort of talk about what's happened there like I mean, I've got a few things I can say about yourselves, but I'm not going to because it's your your turn to answer. Uh, yeah. But we want the best and worst of 2020. Okay, so so the best must, best thing that's happened for you guys I mean, 2020. She'd kill me if I didn't say this. So the best <laughs> thing for me is, is getting married in Congrats, 2020, course, <laughs> which is a rare thing because not many people yeah. actually managed to keep their wedding plans ahead, did they? Well, so. that's it. We were originally supposed to have 120 people. How many we had did you to have? cut it down to 30? Jeez, that's but a you know, hard thing to do. So when, like, when, once this is all properly over, you're gonna have like a big like party to celebrate. Like, properly. Maybe a year anniversary kind of yeah? celebration. Yeah, You'll all be there. Ah, oh, sure cheers, yeah. guys. <laughs> We were we were originally going to hire Big Ten for that. Oh man, so, we're going to get onto Scarlet. Well, we had on. we had booked them, but you know we had to cancel. So. Yeah, of course. Well, hopefully their their diaries won't be too busy to slot yeah. you in next year. Fingers so. crossed. But yeah, cool. that's, so, that's, so worst that's the best thing. worst thing. I mean, <laughs> worst thing is <laughs> a blanket statement, I suppose. But I suppose it's just the way this country's been run over the last year, from Brexit to COVID to yeah. everything. Yeah. Like, don't even know. start on this. <laughs> <laughs> I think Christ. everything's oh, just been dealt with. Terribly. Terribly. I was trying to have this conversation with my, my parents the other day. Well, not so much my mum, but my dad and my brother. And uh, and sort of trying to... Well, you know, one person had one opinion and someone had oh, another yeah. opinion. And yeah, yeah they, they were trying to argue with me. And I was like, I just don't know how the fuck you can, <laughs> you can think He's that He's done a good it's, job. Yeah, I just like... I mean, you can start off holding on the facts that it's like... Yeah, anyone would deal with it. You know, no one's ever dealt with this before, but I feel but that, like... That's not an argument. That's not an argument it? now. I mean, it, it, every single thing that has been tried has failed. So mm. I think you can't you can't see that as like a, a positive or anything like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think it, if, it, if you're a musician, you're going to look at, at it that way, like towards Boris or something, because he hasn't done... He's done nothing. Nothing. Like anybody, like, or even in the arts, anything to do with that sort of thing. But Telling just, people to retrain. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. We, they don't give a shit. Which, I mean, I can sort of see why he would say it, because there might not be jobs for another few years. What is everybody going to do? Just live on furlough forever? They can't do that. You yeah, might need yeah. to do that. But the way that it was gone about, as if like the, the advertising campaign with that ballerina, mm. and it's like, it was, that it was just so cold, piss, wasn't yeah, it? It was so cold. Piss, like, yeah. and I, I, do something else. Yeah. <laughs> that's just how it came across. Isn't it? I think um, it is difficult for Boris, but like he has... The, he has everything at his disposal. Like, if me and you sit are sitting there thinking, right, how are we going to sort this out? It's just, you know, me, me, you and Bake over here. We'd be like, well, we're drawing up blanks. But he's got, he's like, what, is, what did he pay? Like a, a, a million pounds to some bloke just to go and find some PPE. Yeah. Oh my so he's God. got that sort of money. And he I could swear that was all wrong as well. Put it on Facebook, man. Yeah. Be like, 
hive mind. We've got some ideas about how are we best going to solve this stuff. Like <laughs> we could just go and speak to the old Chinese and get some. Yeah, well, <laughs> speak you know, to them to get a load. Don't know what it might come back with. Them, yeah, mate. that's it. <laughs> Couple of bats. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I shouldn't say that, shall I? Oh. The old Wuhan flu. <laughs> <laughs> We're not getting on Donald Trump territory now. Not, yeah, sorry, Pearson. sorry. Pearson. We're still in it. There's no, there's no sooner about it. We're still very much yeah, in the belly of the beast. <laughs> there is that. Um, yeah. yeah, okay, cool. So that's, yeah. I'll tell so that was the best. best what was the best thing for you, Tom? Best thing for me, uh, probably I bought a house. Very so, well done. So I bought a house and obviously I got a dog. Um, very cool. You were telling me about this earlier. Pretty good things. Oh, also uh, got a girlfriend. So it's been oh. a pretty, pretty solid year for yeah, me. Awesome. Um, <laughs> you know, I think... Um, but I, I suppose the downside is that... Um, well, I got like a... I got European cruise cancelled. Oh, Had shit. all sorts... Of, our gig with Will and the People. We were really... We're going to talk, gonna yeah. talk about that. We're going to talk about that a little that's, later um, on. But I mean, the cruise thing is... Um, that sucks. So obviously, that's another thing we're going to talk about later on about sort of your musicianship as such. But so obviously, what we were just talking about retraining... You actually have had to do that, right? Yeah, man. I mean, I'm working at a care home now. And you Huntington. were a professional musician before? Yeah. Well, there's no no work going. No. Like. So I'm working in the care home. And I'm really enjoying it, actually. It's it's a, it's a, obviously a left turn, but it's really fun. And yeah. some of the some of these people are absolutely hilarious. Yeah, I bet. We've got one woman who's going to be 101 this year. Yeah. And uh, she just... Some, and another woman who's like 90... I mean, they're... These people are in a care home, so they're old, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they've just got such interesting things to say. So yeah. you, do you feel like you've learned a lot from working there? Yeah. Like a lot just, of cool stuff. What's, what's the best thing you've learned from working with uh, old people? Small, small. Anything. Or I put you too much on the spot there. Well, yeah, also some of the things they say, you know, are the sort of things you'd probably expect to hear in 1945. Ah, I see. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's like going back in time. No, but they time. are actually, most of them are lovely. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't have bad words to say about any of them. I've learned loads of interesting stuff. I've learned how to knit. Yeah, I really? knitted a hat and scarf for my what, girlfriend what for Christmas, mate. <laughs> really? Yeah, just a little bit of a... Uh, you didn't just get Doris to do it for you? No, just a little bit, <laughs> little bit of a uh, hey, knit one, pearl one, but... Pff, you know, <laughs> Did a hat, made a bo- made a pom pom from scratch. Nice. Have you ever made a pom pom from scratch, mate? You don't know until you have. No, I definitely have. Well, what do you use a pom pom for? Yeah, what is even is a pom pom? Is it a hat? You mean the top of the hat? Yeah, that's, 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 oh. that's called a bob- bauble to me, like a bobble hat. <laughs> oh, yes, but well, I made a bobble hat, but this this you call it a pom pom. That's a pom pom. <laughs> Well, mate, I mean, you can say what you want, but until you've had spent time in these knitting circles, you don't know proper lingo, do you? So, I yeah, love it because it's actually true. Like, yeah, I'm not being funny. You don't walk into a knitting club and go, right, let's make bobbles. <laughs> You'd be laughed out of the room. <laughs> so just think about it, for fuck's sake. Oh, God. Yeah, Chris, fuck's oh, sake. Right. So why'd you call him Bake? Yeah. Because he bakes all the time. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> well, actually, or, or is that a story for another time? It's Christian. Is it a story for another time, or are you going to let him do? Are least, you going to no, let him? I'll let, I'll let you. Talk I tried to not, save you, Christian. Um, Just remember was, that I tried. It's I tried. not. <laughs> it's not what you might think. Oh, all right. Um, it's, it's really not. It's really not. Really, uh, when when we were at school, we had a head teacher called Chris. Chris Bacon. Chris Bacon, oh. rest in peace. Yeah, exactly. God rest Martin his soul. Bacon. Martin Bacon, that was it, yeah. Um, but we just knew him as Mr. Bacon. Yeah, obviously. yeah. And um, <clears throat> when he first joined, the rumour went around that his first name was Chris and his middle name was P. Chris so P. P. Bacon, Chris yeah, Bacon, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, this is where I'm going to interrupt you, Tom. Just by telling Tom that story, that's how I got the nickname because I really? told the story. No way. And oh fuck! I thought and, this was going to be his so name's much Chris. No, and his name's Chris. So I was like, oh, it's his name's Chris so P. Bacon now. It's, <laughs> he Tom will call me Bake, but it's gone from being Chris P. Bake to just P. Bake, P bake or, to just Bake or just Peebs. That's not cool. Bake. Oh well, that's a nice, nice thing. I, I mean, I the. In my mind, obviously, without going too much to detail, I thought it was marijuana related. Well, that's illegal. So. Yeah, of course it is. But also, not just that, um, Bake, uh, Half Bake Love songs. Well, that's, yeah, well, that's, that's where, where it came from. And also, well. Me and Bake will kick you into shape. Don't yeah. you stay. One of your tracks, right? So oh, that's yeah, why. Yeah, yeah, that's one of us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Actually, well, well, I'm going to stop it right there. We're going to play the track. Wicked. Let's do it. Yeah, let's, let's it, play yeah. it. So, cool. do you want to introduce it? Which one is that? <laughs> <laughs> no, this this one is called uh, Love and Be Loved Back. Sharpen all the parts to keep the blood to your heart So that it pricks and then he pricks to try to pull it apart It's just a start but it's important you are 
confident and strong Just long enough to carry on No, we know home is where the heart is Home is where you lay your hat Mostly on your head and underneath Is mostly where you're sat So home is heart and heart is home But home is where you're sat So sit everywhere and everywhere Is comfortable and that oh, Me and Bake will kick you into shape To help you stay With that beat June's designed To help you move and keep good shape And not procrastinate Although relaxing can be nice Just get done what can be done And try to get on with your life Boredom is right There is pain, strain And often little gain And maybe most of it is hard And babe, unpleasant That's a shame But the chance is slim That we will ever be like this again So pass your lips And grab some hips We're eccentric But out to cause embarrassment It's good crack So love and be loved back It's an attack So kiss me quickly You're the one Who takes life with me Eccentric but out to cause embarrassment, it's good crack What's so love and be loved back, it's an attack So kiss me quickly, you're the one who takes life with me so run as Absolute fast tune Yeah, I love that That's Seminal it. recording Seminal, <laughs> honestly how, how, yeah. did you record, how did you record your tracks? Because the re- recording sound really like, quite raw, which is something that I really like yeah, we just did it in um, Christian's bedroom. Yeah. On we had one, so we p- put Logic on my computer and uh, have one condenser mic, and then just DI Christian's yeah. acoustic, and then everything else. We just, if you want it louder on the mic, you stand closer. <laughs> really? Yeah. So you don't go like do you don't get it done in the studio. You just literally do it DIY yeah. at home. Simple. Yeah. We don't need to because it's only guitar and vocals. Yeah, it's, it makes sense. It's so yeah. easy. Yeah. Do you never want to take it's it to like studio record? To yeah, studio I, think we, I think we should. You should definitely do that, You should, should that, have the band def- aspect def- to it, oh, man. That'll sound yeah. heavy. Yeah, it would be sweet, but it, like we've just got to, first of all, organise that. Yeah, it's just, <laughs> yeah. Right, we know ourselves how, it's how just much lot, shit And then we've got to pay for that. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> trying to we organize, it. Yeah. yeah, we can't even organize ourselves half the time. So, oh, no, like, trying to organize a whole group of people. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Well, it's, it's, I think it's, it's, it's even if it's a long term project, so it's just something that you work on for a while. You know, I'd, I'd love to hear it personally. And I think I you've think got serious talent to be able to build a big band sound, not yeah, big well, band like. But, you know <laughs> what I mean? I think if we do another EP or even an album, maybe. Oh, oh, but it first, should guys. Can't. Definitely consider because. Obviously, as you guys know, you need to you need to keep mixing things up. You know, you need to to change the product if you like. Yeah, so yeah. keep it interesting. Keep as people well. interested. Exactly. Even yeah. making it, even making it more Stay interesting. Inspired as well. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Right. So um, that's the best and worst of twenty twenty. So yeah, what was your away. worst, Tom? Did you say your worst? I believe I said my worst. It was like. Uh, my crew's being cancelled. Oh, right, yeah, 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 yeah. Sort of malarkey. So that's what sort of led, led us on to the sort yeah. of talking about him being working in a, a care home. Yeah, I see, I see, I see. So, I remember uh, now. I so, remember punks, now. do you want to go next? Me? Uh, yeah. Oh, I am going in. Go on in. Uh, best thing, uh, I think it's, yeah, because I, so I moved house in, like, into, into two beds, so uh, I could have my own studio space. Uh, and then just generally having more time to uh, produce and just make beats and stuff and yeah. just spend more time on that I guess so yeah that, and you haven't got to drive anywhere have you ain't got to drive anywhere no yeah because I had to go to Erith before and go to my parents and make music there and I mean, it's a bit hard sometimes although it was long having time off work and that it's at the same time it is also a fucking blessing in disguise for a, for a, in a certain sense isn't well, it like yeah, yeah, I, well I did work like the way through but you know I'm not going out or anything anywhere so I was like oh, I've got fuck else to do so I'll go upstairs and make some beats or something so yeah why not gave me more time yeah, fucking yeah. game on. So, okay. Worst thing? Worst thing. Um, I'm going to go a bit general. Just kind of just the fucking sheer amount of gigs that we like, that we missed. Out, <laughs> oh, yeah. Just me, like me, like drum and bass gigs and our Bleed Easy gigs. Um, yeah, man. That fucking yeah, sucked. I know. It's the hardest fucking thing Killer. to have to come to terms there. with, wasn't it? Like when, when it first happened, because we had our, when it first happened, we were playing... Portland Arms in Cambridge Bank competition, weren't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I suppose that was the main one. Oh. Really to, that was the massive hit. And it was man. for a set at Strawberry Fair. Which uh, right, because I was going to come to that, wasn't I? And then I think it got cancelled. Yeah, last yeah minute. I know. So then, so so to anyone that listens that doesn't know or isn't from Cambridge, Strawberry Fair is like a free event, which is essentially a festival, isn't it? It's like a, it's a free day festival in Cambridge. And to play at Strawberry Fair is any Cambridge band sort of aim, really, isn't it? Like... Obviously, you ha- aim for bigger things, but you always want to play Strawberry Fair. And yeah, it's just town. really fun. Yeah. Yeah, 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 great. Everyone gets pissed up there. Yeah, the main stage would have been sick as well. Always <laughs> busy. Always busy. Yeah, you 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 know you're going to have a good crowd, don't you? It's yes. just one of them. Yeah. Yeah, I know. That's going. I was going to pick the same, but I'm going to have to do yeah. this. What, 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 what was the best thing for you, Connor? <sighs> um, I'm not going to lie to you. I'll be brutally honest with you. The best thing that I 
did last year was being involved in the release and production of Boogeyman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that was quite that was definitely yeah. the best thing that I that I did last year. It was uh, the end product that we got. We used a, a videographer called Neil Ravulo. Um, and David Kovalenko, I think is how you yeah, say his Link. last name. Kovalenko. Um, and so those guys, uh, those guys basically smashed the video apart. Like they, they, they really were did. so good, man. And like yeah. when we first started doing it, we were really worried about handing creative control over to them. So, so it was quite it was a bit of a scary experience. A little bit vague, wasn't it? Like we had one idea, they had another, but we came together at the end. Of yeah, it. Kind of and yeah. and the, what they actually made out the end of it, it was and epic. also that the sound of the re- the record. I like my dark stuff and the sort of metal side of things, which is not what Bleed Easy is sort of going into now but that's about as far as it's going to go and it was, it was our first punch and it was like this is I saw that video man and it was re- the production on it was great yeah, thank you they did a good job yeah, you guys did a good job yeah we so uh, and we had a great time doing it because we went to this abandoned mansion in, Sh- in uh Shelford, yeah. and we were there like a, in the dark, and we were walking through, and they've set, and it was like being on a film studio, like it was yeah. actually like they set up these big like bell lights all over the top of us, and get the mood lighting all right, and smoke, yeah. smoke, smoke with like Ben's face up close with his dreads, and it just looked so <laughs> cool. So oh sounds really sexy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, save you. that for afterwards, guys. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was your best thing. That was my best thing. Worst that thing. was definitely not the worst thing. Uh, the worst thing, um, well, it's a hard one. I mean, there's lots of negatives. Well, the, the worst thing for me is is losing the gig that we were going to play with all the yeah. people. But the reason why I find that so bad is because we had all of the shit for X amount of months. Then the world opened back up again for a period of time. You know, like we were saying about EL to help out scheme. Yeah. It was in that period. There was months, literal months, that we could have done things. Mm-hmm. And could have done stuff. And just, we just literally did nothing I went out yeah. my highlight of the year was St Ives right and then <laughs> going out in St Ives twice right so that's my the highlight of my my year right and then it gets to October or whatever time Will and the people have set up this searching Will and the people fan page online and they're like look we just feel so distant from all our fans I really want to get closer to like just send us memories and things like that and I was like you know what I've got a fucking nightclub in Cambridge that is pretty big and they're setting it up with loads of seats that yeah, they can use as like a bar so we could definitely get them down for a gig and it'll get them some money I want to get them some money I want to help them out I want to make it fucking sick you know and, 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 and also you boys you've just moved back to Cambridge Christian and obviously Tom you just, well, you've always been here but you're back from the cruises you know you're in a position where we can actually put on this gig and we all love winning the people put it on and I remember and I'll never forget it when I was sitting in St Ives and Boris announced the next lockdown I was sitting with my mate Sam and we were sitting there and, and, and I came to yours afterwards didn't yeah. I and it was like yeah. I could have put this on for two or three months before this but it had to happen went into lockdown November was out of bounds right we'll move it back to December got the phone call from the manager at Bellare and he had to break the news to me that Bellare was going yeah, it's not going to be reopened so Bellare's gone for good now isn't it it's gone there's no no reopening so how long was it there Bellare 45 years 45 it wasn't always Bellara it was called up different stuff. names yeah. but it was the same yeah. place wasn't it now it's been turned into a hotel what was it Cindy's the, uh, the university Cindy's students were called and, uh, Cindy's yeah. my mum calls it uh, what's she Cinderella Cind- 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 Rockefeller's was, was what it was yeah, and uh, Rennell's Rennell's that's it yeah so um, so yeah then obviously so you think oh yeah we're, we're don't worry, we'll move it to the next month. And he's the, the manager, and in his mind, it's all going fine. And then obviously there's loads of things behind the scenes. But anyway, the, the club then got shut down. The thing is, though, they're you know they're a headline band. You've got to pay them to come. They're not coming for fun. It's not that's not what it is. And they hold partly for fun, isn't it? But it's a gig at this professional. You know, at their yeah, at yeah. their level. And and also the reason I wanted to do it in the first place is because I knew they were struggling. And I knew it was you know it's, it's one of them things. I wanted to help, and also. It, it's a massive thing for me. I fucking love it. I'd love to just play with them. I don't care if I make a penny or not. It will happen, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. Well, it is. Yeah, it's, de- it's definitely going to happen. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that, uh, but then now we can't put the gig on elsewhere because nowhere else is as big as Bellari was to be able to seat that amount of people. Like, yeah, yeah. What about Junction? Yeah, maybe sitting down, but do you know what I mean? Like Junction hiring two. it. Hiring it for Junction a load two, of people. Junction two, good work. Junction two is a great. Venue I mean, we're all, well, we're just going to have to base it off of what yeah. what the rules are going to be going course, forward this yeah. year, aren't they? Aren't well, we? What are you guys going to do when this is all over with um, with your drum and bass nights, man? With sabotage and stuff like oh, that. Oh, there's there's so obviously we've lost Bellare, so we can't put on the drum and bass nights. Um, so we sort of, which is in the first episode of the podcast, which we did touch on a bit with Dan. 
Uh, basically, Sabotage is moving more in the live direction, uh, but we are still, we've still got our drum and bass crew. Like, they're obviously, they built this whole thing with us. We're not going to abandon them and everything that we built. Um, but we're sort of, we're not going to try and put on straight up drum and bass raves. We're going to put on multi-genre nights in cooler little places. So, like, yeah. we'd book a smaller drum and bass DJ that's still quite well known in the underground scene and book him as well as, like, a hip-hop artist as well as someone else, another type of DJ. So it's more of a multi... Variety. Yeah, more yeah. of a variety. Not saying that we'd book, like, you guys for that sort of night because it would be yeah. too yeah, far yeah, end yeah. to each other. But what we could do is our stuff is nothing like your stuff, but we could still do a gig to get together quite easily. Yeah. You know, yeah, but 100%. we couldn't put heavy drum and bass on with just edward there at the yeah, start do you know yeah. what i mean it's like, <laughs> yeah, no, it wouldn't work yeah so uh, and you're you're a f- i did the door at your gigs a couple of times and it did get a little bit rowdy <laughs> I don't so know. you so you worked at the door yeah we haven't yeah. been touched on that so tom's what? actually got a, you've got a door license right well you're a doorman oh uh, yeah only the uh i'm the hardest doorman in cambridge as long as you know not talk to any of the other doors <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! Yeah. So, do you? Do, what's the worst story you've ever had being on the doors? Uh, well, I mean, the worst stuff is like shit and pee pee and stuff like that. Oh. Do you know what I mean? People pee pee. Well, people shitting themselves. Pee-pee well, I, there's this. Um, there's this one of someone did put up a window. I saw one guy. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, and that was a, that was a woman, me. mate. And there's this other one um, of this. Uh, this woman was just. We were just stood watching the dance floor, and she just squats down in the middle of the dance floor, and starts having a piss. What? Shut up. I know, man. It's terrible. Well, right in front of just in the middle of the dance, busy no, dance which, floor. Which, which club? This was Jeez. Revs, I think. What? Oh my god. Yeah, I know some real like rotters out there. Really? Like, yeah, and you don't know because like I I kicked out this one girl for uh, so I'm I'm on the door like it's not a super like busy night, and this person comes up to me and goes, "Excuse me, sir," didn't know my name. Excuse me, sir. I'm like, yeah, and um, she's like, someone's a. Uh, Someone's being fingered over there. <laughs> and I was like, oh, really? Well, let's go and check it out, shall we? So uh, I've got to see this. So I walk over there and uh, lo and behold, there's a girl sitting on a gentleman's lap and uh, she's getting frigged to death. <laughs> and uh, they're not even being particularly... So, like, so what, what was she expecting you to do? Yeah, I know. So, well, I just went like this. I was, I just tapped on her shoulder. I was like, can I join in? Um, you you're going to have to stop. <laughs> stop what you're doing and come to the front, please. And uh, so obviously they got off and uh, she got off and uh, she she wasn't like, she got caught, you know, so she's she's coming out. So, and, so is uh, that a rule? You're not allowed to finger Yeah, no fingering in the nightclub. Uh, it's, it's written on the door in, in small yeah, print. No, it's not really that's like, that wasn't even the nightclub fun. bit, that was the bottom floor, like in the restaurant area where you have your <laughs> chips. Oh. No drugs, no weapons, no fingers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want salt on that? Oh, yeah. oh, I, know. I know, man. It's, it's horrible. And um, and and then she comes back like ten minutes later saying, "I need my coat." I was like, "Okay." She's like, "You need to get it for me now." I was like, "Well, it's going to take a minute because there's a queue." And she's like, "Well, I need my coat." And I was like, "Well, you should have thought about that before you start getting fingered." You know? <laughs> you <didn't say> that. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, that's the best thing about being a, being a doorman. You can just be like. Matter of fact about it. Yeah, true. fucking okay. hell, man. <laughs> no, so, should have thought about that. <laughs> so, I mean, obviously, people at home they might not know you as well as we know you, but I would not put you down as the doorman type. Neither, <laughs> neither at all. <laughs> but when I first saw you, when I was in Fokkerez, when I was about eighteen, nineteen, or whatever, and I remember seeing you dressed in your little white shirt and your black tie and whatever, <laughs> oh, yeah. and I was like, "Fuck, Tom Pollen is a, is a sexy doorman." <laughs> That wasn't the word I would say, but <laughs> but yeah, so you were on the door and I was thinking, well, that's a bit of a strange situation. I wasn't really expecting that. So one, how did you end up doing it? And two, have you ever been beaten up? <laughs> oh. <laughs> or not um, beaten up, but have you ever had a proper smack? I've been punched a couple of times, yeah. Really? Yeah. We've had a few disagreements. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Chris is in the nightclub. <laughs> Fuck off, Tom! <laughs> <laughs> what a love of you! The girl was on my lap. <laughs> Oh. Gloria, I hope you didn't hear that. <laughs> long time ago, long time ago. Um, <laughs> that was very well done. Chris. You're a good man. Right, sorry, back to the question. Go on. Uh, yeah, so I've got a mate called Paddy, who's a very good friend of mine, but he, um, I was actually working in the dry cleaners. And he went to work in the dry cleaners as well. And um, he was also working on the door. And he was like, I was just chatting to him. And I was like, oh, I'd quite like to do that. He was like, well, why don't you get a license and I'll give, give you some work straight away. And I was like, uh, I sort of thought about it for a bit and sort of put it back. And then I re- eventually I thought, do you know what? 
Fuck it. Fuck it, I'll just get a license. So you just do like a, a course, like a week-long course. Kung Fu. Yeah, you just learn all the basics. Jiu-jitsu, Everybody wants Kung Fu. Kung Fu. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What they do is they put you into a chair like on Neo from The Matrix. <laughs> yeah. You're in no. the zone. <laughs> no, they don't, teach you, they don't teach you anything like that. Just uh, as much as I'd love to carry on talking about your... Um, your uh, barman, not barman, uh, your door career. Thank you. Uh, we need to ask Nigel's best and worst of 2020 because we need to swiftly oh, move yeah. on uh, <laughs> because time is of the essence. F- is that right? Yeah, essence is uh, Time is of the well essence. Um, and yeah, that's it. I, ha- I can speak and I can read. Don't doubt um, yourself. <laughs> I'm actually reading this all off a script here. All of us have laptops <laughs> in front of us. We're reading word for word what we're supposed to say. And you're still fucking it up. <laughs> <laughs> like Ron Burgundy when the cap was come up and shout. <laughs> Sorry, no, sorry. Oh, shall I go right, find Nigel, myself? Nigel. I go, I'll go do that Nigel's now, actually. best and worst. This is a personal jingle. Best and worst. 2020. Da-da. Da-da. Um, best thing for me was put, put a music out again, because I pretty much didn't put anything out as RMP for pretty much a year. Yeah. Which was, which was well, nice. Well, we actually touched on that not yeah. long ago, did we? Because we didn't actually notice that Yoda was right at the start yeah. of 2020 yeah. in January. And it didn't feel like it had been that long. And we realised that it was that long. Then it came with like the anxiety of like putting music out again. I'm sat on so much stuff. It's all gathering dust and stuff like that. Or does it even sound as good as I thought it did in the first place? But now this has come out and the response with yeah. um, every, uh, everything I plan to do in the summer has been um, literally amazing. Everyone sharing it, messages, comments and stuff like that. I think uh, saved on one of my playlists. Oh, yeah, actually. Yeah. No, I like that. Because literally, a lot, of the t- like, a lot of the songs I put out, I by the time they come out, I feel like I've got no connection to them at all whatsoever anymore. The only time I get excited about them again is when I hear the master or the the first like studio mix and the first master. Then I get excited about it. But I also study music tech, so I like the science and the engineering. So that's what's getting me buzzing. The, the, with that one, like <laughs> Tess the other day, my girlfriend Tess, uh, uh, it was so quick though, wasn't it? Yeah, literally How 24 hours, mate. Like, uh, yeah, can you do like what was the whole thing? I, I was trying to come to yours to change the drums because I started pranging oh, yeah, about the drums. Laptop. And oh man, it was my laptop. Was this, was this when you wrote it? Yeah, or? when I was I was writing it. Time. Yeah, I was yeah. writing it. Like this was like the start of the day. I probably went. This you was, were actually in supposed to be in lockdown. Though, well, so I'm a bad bitch. That's what bad bitches do. Understand? <laughs> but um, yeah. What else so. Do do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ben, you're naughty as well. <laughs> naughty, dreaded warlock. No, but we had to get a judge. You know what I mean, like we were, we were. I, I feel like we were safe. <clears throat> but yeah, so that that was one of the best things. Like. Putting music out again, and I'm looking forward to getting busy with putting out a lot more music this year than yeah. ever than ever before. It's going to be the same for actually right, all this, of us. This year is very cr- yeah. cramped. Well, we've we've got a whiteboard, we've got a plan. Like, I actually ticked off everything I planned to do this summer. I was going to send you a video, but I thought it was a bit wet, so I was like, <laughs> I, I was we actually do have in. a whiteboard. Yeah, it's not a joke. Like, like, we, like, I said we, we need to. one. We need like, one because we were losing our direction. Yeah, we, we, like, we yeah. need to fucking have us have it there so it's in front of us. And when we've done it, when something doesn't need to be done anymore, we wipe it off or we tick it or whatever, and we sort of set ourselves on goal. Yeah, right we're, co- we're constantly making adjustments. Like we just had, like, got to a point like we need to touch base a lot more often. And, like you have to make adjustments all the time, otherwise it, everything just stagnates and it becomes long. Like you're starting some, something for too long. Yeah, yeah. lack of direction. Well, of course, that's the uh, beauty of a whiteboard compared with a bog standard piece of paper, isn't it? Of yes. Course, the whiteboard, you can make yeah, just, adjustments as you want. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And also, you're not damaging the environment. No, no trees so, were exactly. harmed in the making of this yeah. bleed easy structure. Podcast, <laughs> <laughs> podcast structure. Um, yeah, so that's the best thing, really. Right, go um, on then. Worst Worst thing, worst thing, fucking Tiger King. What? <laughs> like, literally, right. I, 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 at the time, right, listen, like, why is that, that the worst at, thing? Right, because at the time when I watched it, I'd had a bit of a heavy one the night before because it was lockdown. There was fuck all else going on. I was sat there at the, in my room from the start of the day. This is what I still lived at my mum and dad's. I got to like five, six in the evening. I was like, there's nothing, nothing going on at all. I was like, yeah, I'll just check this out. I ended up watching the whole thing in one sitting. I was more shocked the whole time. So I carried on watching it and watching it and watching it. And then there's the stuff that came after it. Like all the memes, like, it was just, just the biggest waste of time, really. It, I mean, like, I, 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 didn't, I didn't I didn't rate it. I mean, I do think it was a little bit over. Oh my wasn't God. It? Nigel, like, yeah. I'm just, just. I, I watched it literally the day it came out. Before you anybody, told I, me to watch it yeah, before it was so it's good. So now he's, a, now he's <laughs> yeah, <a> reflecting <laughs> almost one year on. Worst thing of 2020, Tiger King. Fuck Tiger King. Yeah, I've I been know, yeah, singing his praises for fuck knows how long. But now I'm going to say, no, nope, nah, I don't like me. tigers. 
No, <laughs> I didn't watch but it. All of it it's because of just how too. It was just a bit, time. a bit too much, and everything that came after it was just really irritating. It after was because then we were still in lockdown, and you got like, Carol Baskin, then, then, whack them all these stupid dancers. I've got a little sister as well. She'd watch the same TikTok every day, learn the dance. Like, do you want to do? Oh, bruh, it was so. It was so staged. I yeah, thought it was the whole thing. That was bollocks. Fuck that. Well, I'm not going to disagree. I, I mean, mean, looking I, back on it now, I don't think it was a great thing. To it was, mate. It wasn't even that. But it was good. certainly a pivotal moment, wasn't it? It was you just something been, to do. It you've was been just watching something a lot of Louis Theroux recently. Have you seen the episode where he goes? Yeah, to well, I actually watched August, that after yeah. watching it. Yeah, uh, yeah. Because yeah, okay. um, they, they touched upon edit, like everything pretty much, and, like in that whole short, well, like an hour. Or, like, yeah, and, like, and they stretched it out for like however many. Yeah, I oh, know there was other people in it when they're Carol Baskin. Well, yeah, I didn't. They didn't actually have Carol Baskin in the in the Louis Theroux one. No, the, but no. she, but she's she was more. I think they extended more into her life, which is what sort of extended <laughs> it because she obviously, well, I'm not saying she did kill her husband, but she <laughs> probably did, she did kill her husband. <laughs> That's what I didn't <laughs> like about the series. It, it was left without an answer. Yes, yeah. exactly. Like, all of it is just long. Man. It was just. I think the reason I used that word pivotal, it was that point where it was like. This whole COVID thing was all brand new at that and time. There was, wasn't fuck it? There was all a different on. phase Literally of COVID to what, to, to what we're in now. There was the, the Tiger King phase, the Will and the People phase in 2021. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it's gone. That's how Tiger King's gone. I and actually Tiger didn't King. watch Tiger King. I was very busy watching uh, the Star Trek, The Next Generation, which is the one from with Jean Luc Picard in. I'd never seen that before, so I thought instead of Tiger King, I'm just gonna, you know, watch something with some substance. Yeah, you didn't miss out on much trust. That's Thanks. probably the. I'm, I'm, glad. Glad. I'm not gonna because I wasn't it. sure, but now I know that I did the right thing. It's it's <laughs> just a big waste of time. Like you said, like Christian said, there's no resolve at the end, and it just does go on. No, I'm I was let down it. to be honest with you, boys, because I see something with the name Tiger King. And I'm thinking this is going to be some fucking That's what good I thought. Stuff. That's what I think it was going to be documentary about a, a, an actual oh. tiger. And there wasn't even, he wasn't, wasn't even really a tiger king. Just no. a yeah. bloke with some tigers. Some, no, yeah. some meth. Yeah. That's meth another reason why. Riddled <laughs> southerner from I'm, America I'm who's picturing. like literally yeah. a proper, what, what are they called? Mm. Um, confed- is it yeah. Confederates? Confederates, yeah. yeah. he's like some proper Yankee. Yeah, because I, I thought it was going to be like some Steve Irwin shit. And I was like, yeah, sick. This looks good. Because yeah. like, well, sometimes I put a David Attenborough like documentary at that, at that yeah. time after I've had a you know a bit of a mad well, one. That's the time you watch document. Oh, well, I tend to watch documentaries or something like that. That's what I was expecting, and it was the polar opposite. But then I kept, had, had to carry on watching it because it was just so shocking. Well, it was it was one of them, wasn't it? Everybody watched it. Everybody's most people. Other than Tom, Tom I'm Tom, thinking Tiger with a Star Crown Trek. at that point. I'm watching. I'm seeing it written. Tiger King, best thing ever. I'm thinking Tiger with a Crown. I think what can possibly be wrong with that? <laughs> yeah, that's of course. But it turns out you can just name anything whatever you want. It doesn't have to be properly descriptive at all. <laughs> well, I mean, it's all in terms. Like, this is... isn't going to be that loud, is it? It's up to you. No. Do well, you know what I mean? No, I know. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. But you do need to watch Tiger King. Just to make your you opinion. You don't need to watch it. Just to make your opinion. Just to, well, I yeah, don't for know. That, for that reason, for, to make an opinion, yes. But some people don't like Americans. Not don't like Americans, but watching that sort of TV, you know, like there's a certain type of, it's like Bracket. The, the Towie of American television, right? So, so, and that isn't like Towie, I know, but it's almost like, it's, it's in, it investigating people's lives, basically. Yeah. And that is what that was but it, on a fucking whole weird fucked up level. <laughs> yeah, man, but like, you, you haven't sold it to me. So like- I'm not, oh, some, dude, it's not that great. Some stuff but. that's really bad, but I had to watch. So I watched this film ages ago now called Zombievers. Oh, now this is, this film, I mean, you know from the title, it's going to be low budget. Yeah. <laughs> low <laughs> budget. It's going to be low budget. But I mean, the, the name had me and I, and I got there and I, I sat down in front of it and there were some quite attractive ladies in it and mm. some- some flesh eating beavers and that had me <laughs> and it was so crap it was good no I, I watched it on uh, it's actually I think now it's on uh, it's on on a streaming platform somewhere oh, right. but um, it was brilliant and then the guy from that was also in the Boner Police Bo- Boner <laughs> which, is, which I didn't watch because that was well I watched the first sort of half that's an hour of that <laughs> but, that? Uh, that sounds like something that's more up your street feature length <laughs> Zombievers. How old is that then? Where's it from? I can't believe this is a real thing. <laughs> yeah, no, you need to watch. It's actually not a terrible film. Is it? It's the, not a terrible film. <laughs> the pre- well, the premise is outrageous, isn't it? This is zombies, beavers, beavers, yeah. beaver zombies. Basically, some toxic waste spills into the zombies. Yeah, I could have. I could girl. have told you this without it, yeah. watching the film. It starts with the toxic and, uh, waste. Before you know it, but the beavers are. In, you know, pretty Incredibly clever. attractive. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen such a beaver with such amazing teeth. I mean, I've seen some nice beavers <laughs> in my time. He must gnaw <laughs> through some wood. <laughs> oh, I've seen some, some in my time, but none. Damn, that beaver's attractive. <laughs> <laughs> hey, see what I did there? No, no, no. Okay. No, 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 they'll no, cut no, that out. No, no, no. 
yeah, yeah, I'm gonna cut that. Out. <laughs> that's out of, you know what's that's going out of context. Now, what the fuck? <laughs> well, damn, that's just thought it was funny. No, but yeah, you should you should definitely watch oh, that. Oh, oh. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, okay, right. Moving on from beavers and dams and zombies. But yeah, that's so, that's best and worst thing in 2020. That's ben, does that out the way? Finally, this that took a lot longer than I expected no, about no, no, best no, and worst of 2020. Done, no, I know. But oh, now okay. the next sorry, part of sorry. our show is our repeat section that we do every time. But we've got our first ever jingle. So. Oh, New, old, and unheard. Oh yeah, this is new, old, and unheard. Uh, start with Nigel. What's your new, old, and unheard? Uh, my new favourite jam at the moment is a tune called Navajo, spelled N-A-V-A-J-O, by a guy called Masego. That's pretty sick. I've been What's his name? Masego. I played Speak it to you the other day. It's Masego. Masego. I don't know. I don't know how you pronounce it. You played it to me, did you? Yeah, I played it to you the other day. Oh, was I it thought you was an Indian. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, it's nice. <laughs> yeah, that tune. Have you heard it? <laughs> no, maybe. Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna listen to it now. Yeah, no, it's good tune. Good tune. <laughs> he sold it. He sold good it to tune. you. Yeah, that's that's how you sell something. No, trust yeah. me. Nigel could sell us to an Eskimo. <laughs> um, literally. Um, yeah, so that's my new jam. Old, oh, old, old is um, "Murder to Excellence" by Jay Z and Kanye West because I just absolutely love the production on that. And then my unheard is a tune called "Tuft," spelled T U W F, by a guy called Dreamer Clean. That's my new. Come one on, you need to elaborate week. a bit on that. It was a bit way too quick. I um, think. well, it's not really. I've only just found. How them. did you come across the Jay Z and Kanye track? Why did you suddenly start listening to that? Again? Oh, I just ran. I was. I just have like periods of time where I just literally deep dive Spotify and I just landed on it. And there's like a bit halfway through the song where I think it's like a key change. And I just love what happens there. It's absolutely beautiful. So then I started listening to that for ages. This no. is what unheard. He's talking about. No, oh, the that's old, that's the old one. Oh, so, yeah, sorry, yeah, so yeah. the unheard. Where did you, you just found it on Spotify? Do you know anything about the artist, or is it? Just, I'm, just, I've listened to him over the last few years, but I've not really followed his stuff massively. I just like certain songs, and this is another one that's popped up recently. And that what I was really, the, really the really song like. called? It's called Tough by Dream McLean. Say that slower, please. It's a song called Tough by Dream McLean. Dream, Dream McLean. Well, what, 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 McLean. Well, sounds like Dream McLean. Oh, yeah, no, it sounds like a fucking oven cleaning company. Dream McLean. Lean. Dream yeah. and Clean Co. Yeah. The freshest <laughs> ovens in Cambridgeshire. I've seen the bands. <laughs> yeah, that's my new Auden Herd. What's, a, your, what's your new Auden Herd, Connor? Well, am I going second, am I? Oh, well, yeah, you are now. Right, well, well my, my new is, uh, it's not actually that new, but we're, we're, we're just, we sort of go back about sort of six six months, eight, just nearly about a year sort of time. Um, but there's a, a girl called Ellie Dixon from Cambridgeshire, um, and she's got a track called Space Out. I actually heard her through BBC Introducing, and oh my God. I think I've heard of Ellie Dixon before. Man, she's so good. Like, she's got like... Um, uh, like she does YouTube, uh, what are they called? Loop pedals, like does things all on her own. Like, you know, when they split the screen and it goes into four different sections. But yeah, man, she's so, so good. Like she did covers like Billie Eilish, Easy Life, all that, like loads of different stuff. And yeah. she is a very, very sick yeah, musician. Sick. And her voice is really cool as well. Um, she's a singer songwriter. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think so. Yeah, I think, I believe so. But this song that I've chosen, Space Out, is very poppy, um, but it's very cool. And the music video is even cooler. Yeah. Um, so I'd definitely recommend anyone to go check it out. Um, my old. Hey, I'm your light. I'm the one who takes you there. Yeah, yeah. So what's that? That's Metallica. Okay. Um, it's sad but true uh, by Metallica, uh, which is old. Maybe not to you, Tom. It might be new. Maybe, <laughs> maybe that came out when you were, I don't know, 24. Was that, was that, <laughs> was that, was that a black album? Yes, it was, yeah. Yeah, yeah that, which I, I was trying to Siri that earlier. I was trying to, hey, Siri, play Metallica, the Black Album. Oops. <laughs> See, Siri's going to look. <laughs> Siri, Always fuck off, don't play music. See, look, it's done it, right? Okay, so it's actually done exactly what... Go away. Right, anyway, whatever that's just done, it brings up the Four Horsemen cover version. I hope that doesn't get us done for copyright or whatever this is, because I wasn't supposed to play that. It just came out of my phone. But anyway, when you type in the Black Album, we'll say it on Siri... Um, sorry, that's I only though. said that just because I said Siri, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. So, uh, because I because I did that, I said the Black Album, it doesn't it? It's called Metallica. The album's called Metallica. Yeah, yeah. But it's called the Black but Album. Because the it? album cover is black. Everyone yeah, every, it's, the black, it's the black Album, right? Because yeah, yeah. it had like the logo, but it was all etched over in black paint, oh, yeah, wasn't yeah, it? That. So, so, um, so yeah, I was listening to that, and, and it's just, it's not heavy, like, you know, like Dance Ones are heavy, like, mm. sort of. <laughs> 
<laughs> Sorry to do it. Nigel, do it again. I want to do it in every episode now. <laughs> no. No, oh, the one. Bad bitches love D. <laughs> I've been practicing. I can do it probably now. Yeah, see, he's got it now. Yeah, he's I'm going to move. Down. I'm going to start making metal music for real. But it's not, it's not, it's not, <laughs> so, um, it's not like that sort of heavy, but it's just so. <laughs> it's very chuggy. It is, isn't it? Like Metallica have just got like. You know, I don't like Iron Maiden. I don't like that sort of new wave Sorry, British heavy metal. You don't like Iron Maiden. No, I don't. I don't, I don't really like Iron Maiden. No, I either. think it's very. It's I've very got nothing against. It. I've never no, met I them. Don't, no, I don't. No, no, no. I'm not I a fan do. of their I music. Like, I like Run to the Hills and things, but I don't listen to their back catalogue. Like, number oh my of the God. beast is such a good yeah, album. Yeah, yeah, but like even then, the number of the beast, the track, and it's like, like Tony Hawk's, right? Yeah, of <laughs> and then so like all of all of the like. Standard Iron Maiden tunes, Trooper, etc., yeah. are ones that I like, but I don't love Iron Maiden. Whereas Metallica, you delve into their sort of the the smaller tunes by Metallica, and you're like, oh my god, these are fucking hidden gems, you know. And like even the big tunes, like For Whom the Bell Tolls, all the yeah. old ones, like they are just so good. Second and I, I I love it. Yeah, you know, and it's like all of those sort of tunes, I fucking love. You must and, be an Iron Maiden fan, Ben. No. <laughs> what? No, sorry. Yeah, it's it's am I the only one in here? I think you. Thing. It's, it's, thing. They're not like metal, 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 are they? It's a bit too operatic. It's, it's quite classic. Rock. Rock. I, mean, I, I respect the maiden. Yeah, but of I just I think they're good for them. They're doing something good. People like it. <laughs> good it's for not for me. Yeah, same, yeah. same. But Metallica have got that. They took it to the. That's when heavy metal really, really got heavy, wasn't it? it like Sabbath like started fresh, it. it. Sabbath so. started it with the heavy blues sound. Then it went on to the new wave of British heavy metal with with Iron Maiden. Yeah. Well, it's nice to see you getting he- heavily involved in this conversation, Nigel. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, and then uh, so, so I did got- say I'm going to learn something on this podcast. Yeah, there you I've go. There a you lot. go. So it's so a new wave of British heavy metal. Them bands just didn't really click with me as such. I'd actually say I'm probably more of a fan of Iron Maiden's art and, and their stuff than oh, I am yeah. actually Iron Maiden themselves, to be fair. I think the whole appearance of Eddie and everything they've got yeah. is wicked. It's like the Motorhead logo and stuff is. Yeah, yeah. 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 I've seen Motorhead. Yeah, we, we were actually having this conversation a couple of weeks ago on the podcast. God rest his... Uh, yeah. Rest in peace, Lemmy. Yeah, racist yeah, soul. Lemmy. <laughs> his I race. I don't think he was racist, actually, but he did collect Nazi Rimmer Reader, didn't he? That is a bit yeah, racist. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I knew yeah, I'd yeah, have yeah, something yeah, important yeah. in, in this bit of the conversation. I don't know, you know, if it was for purely historical purposes, but I don't know how you Well, he was good mates with Slash, wasn't he? So I don't know. Why well, is he racist as well? No, Slash is black. No, but what I'm saying is... Sorry, mate. Is that I don't think... I don't think you can sit in a house surrounded by swastikas and Nazi memorabilia and not on some level thing. Be racist. This yeah, is pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, like be okay, painting your house red and being like, oh, I fucking hate red. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. To be fair, that is a very good point. He's going to well, somebody's got, like, everybody's got to collect something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but like, collect key be. rings, man. Yeah. <laughs> you could be a born again Christian, couldn't you? <laughs> I mean, that's nearly as bad. Collect some pictures oh, of Jesus. <laughs> I came across a video on YouTube the other day of um, Dave Grohl's speech at Lemmy's funeral. Yeah. Oh my God. At the rainbow. Oh, yeah. This is so heart wrenching. Like, yeah. I mean, yeah. He, he had such an influence on music, didn't he? Oh, Lemmy did. Yeah, man. He was, he was, he was a, considering like, I mean, this is speaking from someone that loves heavy metal. I don't know that many uh, Mohair tunes. Like I don't, I know Ace of Spades, the game, don't play it. <laughs> you know, and there's a couple of others, but. I have one of the albums, Metropolis. When I was a bit younger, it was all right. But he was in he was in uh, Hawkwind before that. Yeah, yeah that's it. Yeah, yeah. And he yeah. had a hit Rocking. called Silver Machine. Silver and Machine. then they wanted to, to stay underground, and they didn't want to like be a big band. He was like, I'll just fucking it, they, do another one then. Really? <laughs> yeah, it was easy as that in those days. <coughs> Circuit, didn't they? Around yeah. like the UK, and they did this. No, no, that was the uh, before that. I was Rocking Vickers. Did you, did you hear about that? No, no, no. no they, yeah, before that, way in the sixties, I think, and he, he was a band called yeah, the Rocking Vickers, and. They got quite big and they're driving around in fucking posh cars and had boats and stuff. So yeah, he's like was way back when. But um, yeah, he's always involved in music, I guess. Yeah, he was. Uh, it's just how influential he has been on so yeah, many yeah. people. Like you say, like the logo and things like that. People see the Motorhead logo. And, you know, then people that wear band t-shirts that don't know who the band are. You got like eight-year-old kids being like, "Oh, look at my new t-shirt." Yeah, <laughs> this big Motorhead, old fucking yeah. bulldog on the front with the, with his teeth out like the Motorhead <laughs> logo. <laughs> Joe Clemens has got it tattooed on his leg, hasn't he? He does. Yeah. Yeah. Big old beast. Yeah, Shout out, Joe. Sick, sick. Um, <laughs> right. Okay. So my and my unheard uh, is a track called uh, "Pulp" by Ronnie Bosch, uh, which is a hip hop artist signed to High Focus Records. Big tune. It is a big tune, and it is. I mean, always in this position with unheard, whether or not it's sort of is it heard, is it not unheard? Like, it's a pretty heard tune. It's produced by Dirty Dyke. It's an absolute fucking banger, and there's some seriously sick bars in there from all of the people. That, so basically, "Pulp" um, the track. 
So Ronnie Bosch hadn't released a solo uh, album and he basically put together this album. It was all produced by Dyke. Uh, and on the last track on the EP, they got Contact Playback together, which was like a hip hop collective made up of um, sort of all of the guys that that, that were originally in, co- in Contact Play. So it was Dirty Dyke, Jam Baxter, Mr. Key, Ed Scissortongue, um, Ronnie Bosch. Uh, I believe that's it, but there might be more people on top of that. Um, but some of them are from Cambridge and uh, some of them are from Brighton. So they all sort of came together and sort of made this this hip hop collective and DJ Sammy B-side on the decks. Um, but yeah, they came back together and did this song on his album that he released last year and the track, the, the, it's just so good. And one of my favourite lines from it is uh, Dirty Dyke, uh, I broke a spade to take the focus off a rake I hate. <laughs> nice. I don't think that's their real names. No, I don't think so. <laughs> Dirty <laughs> Dyke. What's your first name? Dirty. What's your last name? Mr. Dyke. <laughs> What'd you say? What was it? One was one of them. Scissor. Ed Scissortongue. Yeah, Ed, Ed Scissortongue. You come here now. Can you imagine? <laughs> Edward Scissortongue. Edward Scissortongue. Come here. Anyway, so that's that's my uh, new old and unheard. Yeah. So on to the guests. Yeah. Who's first? Do you want to go first, Christian? Well. Having listened to the podcast, having done my research, you know, Ooh. I actually wrote down Did you? my old, new, and unheard. I can't new, speak. New, old, for, unheard. Sorry, new, old. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't get it wrong. You heard the jingle. You know how it works. Down a peg. I can't speak for Tom. I know he didn't even know about it before I told him. So, um, but you now know. So, but you. Yeah, thought- I know. We didn't actually know about it until the first podcast we came on and we just thought, fuck it, well, let's just chance it. And we all just put our shouts out and looked at our phones and we yeah. decided. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, sorry. So Carl. new, I've I've put down, um, so I like Pink Floyd. I'm a big Pink Floyd fan. Awesome. And Dave Gilmore's son, Matt Gilmore, has released an album called Collages. He released it last year. I don't know what month last year he released it. I haven't got a particular track off it that I've chosen, um, but it's, it's just a fantastic album. It's, yeah. If you like your Pink Floyd or your prog or anything like that, it's worth a listen. It's very Pink Floyd style. Yeah, awesome. I'll check that out. What's it called? It's The album's called Collages. Um, a particular track I like off it is called V, V-I-E. Um, but other than that, just the whole album is, is fantastic. And it's Matt, Matt Gilmore. Matt Gilmore, yeah. Awesome. So that's worth checking out. And that was the album released last year. Um, for my old artist... You guys know me very well. Johnny Cash. Oh, all the nice. way. You like Johnny Cash. Yeah. You can't go wrong with Johnny Cash. Dude, you're, we, 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 when I went on uh, uh, the Proper Chat podcast, which you guys are going to go on, I believe, with um, Taylor Mays yes, yeah. um, and Ash, who runs the studio that we record our sessions in, uh, the Johnny Cash came up as one of the people that, that they'd really want to see. <coughs> and he played Glastonbury, apparently, he in did. Like 2003 or 1990, something it like that. It was, that was the year he died, 2003. 2003, so, so it's 1990, in between 95 and 2000. Yeah, because I, I saw it um, last year, because, you know, they did the whole collection on iPlay of, like, Glastonbury's past, because yeah, they yeah, couldn't yeah. obviously do it this like, past year. Um, and they had his performance up there. It was so good. Really? Yeah. I'll have to watch that, to be fair. I, I love Johnny Cash as well. You yeah. primarily got me into it, obviously. But. I mean, yeah, of course, he's very country and... And all that, but like, yeah, he's just so the, dark the, as well. So absolutely, so solidly like, not dark as in like he's got dark tones to his music or anything. But it's just that he doesn't sing about happy things, but he makes it so. I don't know. It's just so solid. Everything that he brings the, out is just so powerful. Do you know? I'd what I mean? really recommend if for anyone who literally knows if if you don't know anything about him, I'd recommend the film Walk the Line with Joaquin yeah. Phoenix. Walk the Line. I'll be yeah. watching that. Cause that oh, have you not seen brilliant. it? No. Oh, watch oh, it. What is it on? It's uh, telly. <laughs> Netflix, I think Prime? it's on Netflix. I just have walked it on. I'll find it. I'll Me and Webby watched it last year. It's a oh really, really good film. No, I'll check that out. Fucking sure. Phoenix, Reese Witherspoon, amazing. Yeah. I don't know. Um, so, yeah, that's my old. Um, looking at my screensaver, Johnny Cash. <laughs> my unheard track is I don't know if it's particularly unheard. We always have um, this problem. Yeah. So it's by a reggae artist called YT from Ipswich, I believe. And the track is called Forward to Reality. I don't know much about it. <laughs> I haven't, I haven't, can't go into too much depth, but... But you know he's from the UK. I know he's UK based. I think it was released in 2017, this track, um, this album. Uh, but it's, oh yeah, if you like reggae, that's a, that's a track. What's his name forward, again? Forward to Reality by YT. 
Check it out, people. And uh, anyone that is listening to this, uh, that sort of, if you want to know where to find this stuff, we will be putting links of all of the things that we are talking about uh, in the uh, like bio description y section of the uh, wherever you would listen to this podcast, whether it be YouTube, uh, Spotify, or Apple. There will be links all in there. So everything we talk about, even the little tiny details, we try and break it apart as much as possible and put all the links in there. Yeah, anyway, nice. Wicked. Nice one. Thanks, Chris. Tom? Okay, so I. Uh Oh, my, my old artist, it was a bit of a toss up. It was a bit of my old artist was a bit of a toss up, really, because I, um, I thought of quite a few things. I used to be really into the chilies. So yeah. Red Hot Chili Peppers was, was really high on my list. Um, I really, really like Louis Armstrong, especially Louis nice. Armstrong and Bing Crosby together. So this is, so wait, hold on. So we're going old first. We're going right? old first. Okay, yeah, so sorry, old, guys. Old I was going to go in chronological order. Surprise, surprise. Reverse. Old first. <laughs> I'm old on her. So old, so actually. I was going in chronological order. You do whatever you, yeah. do whatever you, yeah, yeah, you want. Yeah. So old first. This is how we used to do it. <laughs> and, uh, no, no, Louis Armstrong's <laughs> new to Tom. <laughs> um, sorry, Tom. I keep hitting you with this. It's all right, mate. Um, <laughs> so yeah, uh, Louis Armstrong and Bing Crosby together, I really like uh, l- both of them separately as well. But I think I'm going to have to go with Toots and the Maytals. Uh, oh, spoke to them about rest them, in peace. I think already today. God rest his soul. Yeah, but he's um, the the their music has just been so in, like pivotal to my life. It's been they've been absolutely amazing. I've I just listen to them all the time, every day, whether I'm thinking about music, whether I'm not thinking about music. They've just got perfect songs, especially like songs like Time Tough. Um, my favourite one is uh, "Sweet and Dandy." Yeah, yeah, great Sweet track. And Dandy, yeah. yeah. So, uh, um, did you get all of this from Tom? The inf- when we, because obviously we toots. grew up listening to a lot of Toots in the Maytals. No, didn't I, we? I, well, I was familiar with Toots before I started working with Tom. Right. Um, but I suppose my love for Toots kind of grew more after because you both had I think that. We, we yeah. nurtured yeah, that in each other, didn't I we? I think. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. And so I think actually listening to Toots helped develop our style for writing. Yeah, really, man. I think. Um, yeah, and then uh, so I guess my so it's old, n- current, I uh, know old, new, and unheard, isn't it? No, new, new old, old, unheard. Unheard. But you've done new old, old, so yeah, let's go so. new and unheard. Okay? <laughs> so what's your new? What's, what's what's new in your life? Um, a new a new one is a song called um, "Mover Awayer." By Hobo Johnson. Oh, it's not nice. super oh, yeah. duper new. I can, the, his album, this album came out in the summer. Oh, okay, so it's twenty twenty. Uh, yeah, as long summer. as it's twenty twenty, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. fine. Yeah, and uh, it's a song called Mover Away. And he's got the, he just writes brilliant lyrics. He's <laughs> he like, is a very, says, he's you, a very good. You lyricist. make my Mondays feel like Fridays. Oh, I yeah, think yeah, that's yeah. brilliant. Yeah, and um, then one line is a that just yeah, sells it, doesn't he, it? He's like a hard, it's like hardcore poetry, man. I, I think his, it's like he. He, he's he's sort of not super bothered if the words go over the song particularly yeah. well. He's like, well, I just, he just talks, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, he just, just says what he yeah. wants to say over, like the, a, over the beat. A vocal vomit of cool stuff. Yeah, I um, really, I, I rate him as well. I think he's yeah, got he's a cool. very cool style. Very original. Yeah, yeah really original. Um, and then my unheard one is a guy called Fia, F-I-A, who um, is a guy, he's Hawaiian. I actually heard him when I was in Hawaii on a bus to go and see Pearl Harbor, like visit Pearl Harbor. Mm. And the bus that was taking us there played this song called Fly Away because I don't think he's particularly well known off the islands. And so um, and so I went and looked him up and there's a song called Love Me by Fear. It's real like chill and laid back. It just makes you dream of Hawaii, man. It's really nice. Really? So if you get, get a chance to, go and check it out. Wicked. Right. Nice. Thank you very much. Thank you. No worries. Punk's vicious. <laughs> no, 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 of course not. That's right, that's right. Okay, well, so, yeah, my new, so, um, yeah, earlier this month, I guess, or well, the start of this year, I just got the news that, uh, yeah, just the sad uh, passing away of um, MF Doom, oh, a rapper oh. from New York. Um, well, he's English, actually, he was born in England, but yeah, he lived in New York. Uh, yeah, it's just no, like, like it's just a great, like a great loss, really. Like, yeah, to the, especially to the hip hop scene. I think in, 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 in it all really, aspects. Yeah, yeah, for sure, he's just very like interesting lyricist, um, very like unique. Um, yeah, not a lot of people heard about him, I guess. But now that's the sad thing of like sometimes when artists die, their work kind of gets more known, doesn't it? Which, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But that's just the way. It's I think. Um, I mean, just to put that into perspective. So from my from my scene of the MF Doom passing away. I've seen people from the Gorillas, so Damon Albarn to Tom York from Radiohead. Yeah. All these people praising how how much MF Doom has had such an influence on their lives. I think it's yeah. brilliant, man. Yeah, yeah mate, yeah, it's amazing. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm so in terms of like my top USA USA hip hop is I'm I'm a Wu Tang Clan man, right? 
But Ben's always been MF Doom. He loves Wu Tang as well, but I, I was never into MF Doom like Ben was into MF Doom. Yeah. And it was like MF Doom sort of. Now I'm seeing, you know, for, like for Tom York from Radiohead. That is so completely different. And for him to say that he broad, has such no, a massive in- influence on his his music. Oh, did he? I didn't know that. Yeah, you know, oh, right. you know, for him to say that, and he's like, he's he plays such a massive part in in my creation of music and my and, and and influencing me. Um, you know, it sort of puts it into perspective of how much of an influence he actually had on different people, just from making hip hop. Yeah. You know, but it's just, all it's the- just such a storyteller, and I think that's just what grabbed everybody. And it's just his rhyming pattern. Like he'd make a whole two lines rhyme like like the whole thing rhymes together but he's still telling the story at the same time it's amazing yeah. it was his like rhymes within sentences as well that That's I thought it, were really yeah. cool man like he'd have like two sentences that rhyme but then within one sentence there'd be stuff that yeah. like other little rhymes in there it was it was really cool well, different yeah. rhyming different rhyming patterns mm. through one sort of yeah, delivery I, I heard a word for him man but like a, like a couplet like a little rhyming couplet it's like in it it was just cool it's quite complex yeah isn't it? yeah, yeah. Yes. So cool. Guess, yeah, my new one by him, uh, uh, released very recently. Um, very recently, uh, it was for GTA Online. Um, it was like a new update they did. It's by an artist called Bad Bad Not Good. So it's featuring MF Doom, and it's called the Chocolate Conquistadors. 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 Is that you say? Okay. But yeah, that one. Um, yeah, quite a different kind of style for the beat because obviously it's not one of his beats. Um, yeah, Does he pro- did he produce all of his stuff as well, did he? He did, yeah. yeah. Oh, he made beats as well, like on an Akai sample, the old school. Sort mm, of Akai thing. Akai thing. Um, so old, that's your new, yeah? So, new, you're, so new. although he is an old artist, he is obviously, I mean, it's mm. very relevant at the moment, but yeah, he's your new. I think that came out, oh, when did it? I think, yeah, the end of last year, I think. Uh, but apparently he passed away in, in the October. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so we passed away after. It's strange how they after, kept that. So. For, mm. for two months, you know. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't know why. Um, because he was such an elusive. He person. was an elusive character. Like I saw something the other day. Apparently, I think it was on Ramesh's podcast, and he was saying about he turned up to a gig, he'd play the gig, and then afterwards they'd go to his dressing room to go and like sort of speak to him and see if he was there. And there was nothing there, just a load of masks yeah. thrown across the room, or all the MF Doom masks just trucked across. You'd be expecting to see him, but it'd be some imposter playing him, and then he'd take the mask off, and it's not him, and he'd just be like. <laughs> What it's not fuck? me. Like, I'm a villain. Like, and he's just. Uh, that's it's mad, it. isn't it? It's cool. Yeah. Though. What a what and an amazing Banksy of rap. And yeah, it, it sure. literally is that. Yeah. Cool. Okay, and so new old. Old uh, is by like an alter ego of his called Victor Vaughn. A uh, song called "Let Me Watch," um, and then yeah, Victor Vaughn was quite, he described it as uh, like a young, cutting edge, more of a character who's still in touch with the old school uh, styles of rap, but he was just more. Uh, current with like what he was doing and stuff. okay I, I don't know um, cool so it's, a, it's, an, it's an alter ego yeah, on his alter few, ego a few, and he just had a story behind all of his characters yeah, uh, yeah. awesome so yeah that's the old and, and, and that's that so yeah R.I.P. Doom and what about Unheard uh, oh shit <laughs> shit that was my Unheard <laughs> oh that was your Unheard <laughs> oh so what was your new then the new uh, no, new, new, new was the... Old. F- We're fucking up our own game here. Yeah. Right, okay. So <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so the new one was the one that he was featured bad, bad, on. Not good, it's the new one. Uh, the chocolate can kiss the doors that way. Yeah, and, and then great. old. Uh, old was Mad Villain, all caps. Okay, fine. Mad Villain, off cool. That. cool. Off the, uh, the album with Mad Lib. Yeah. Very well known. Um, but yeah, that's the old one. So it? you're basically doing the whole thing as a tribute oh, yeah, to Doom. This is, yeah, this is my big up. Rest tribute. in peace, MF Doom. So yeah, that's and that's that. Quite so that is the end of new oh unheard. Which moves us swiftly on to a little bit more talking about you guys. <sighs> Sweet. Oh, <yeah. laughs> I want to talk about wrestling. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about wrestling. <laughs> right. Uh, this is probably Go going to be the longest episode we've ever had. It is, man. Hour and twenty, we're out of the moon. But I mean, it's probably going to be cut down a little bit to the people that are listening because we'll cut certain little bits out. But, you know, we're about that sort of time. So, yeah, we kind of chatted briefly about it earlier. But so you're not that current on what you're watching? You so you always were. I, I mean, yeah. I, Wait, what are you talking about? Wrestling here? We're going wrestling into WWE. Oh, All yeah. right. <laughs> so I actually, I used to write for a wrestling magazine, um, which was good fun. Um, I used to be, I even... <laughs> I can't believe I'm admitting this. I actually trained for a little while, um, <laughs> believe it or not. Yeah. And until one session, I did a, a 
face bumps so just going down on your front mm -hmm. put my arm out before me to uh in a in a too Break much in fall. advance yeah. and i dislocated my shoulder oh no way <laughs> really had to pop it back in there I and then that. so that oh. wasn't very nice oh that, um, off. that ring is not forgiven well, no it wasn't sorry, even on dude. the ring though it was on the floor we were just oh. outside the ring so it's horrible um so yeah i stopped training after that but no I, i've always loved wrestling I, i'll i'll always follow it i just haven't watched any of the WWE product for, gosh, nearly a year now. Really? Yeah. I touched upon it. I've watched bits here and there. And if, as you said earlier, you kind of, with the socials, it kind yeah, of, of course. you up to date. That's it. And I mean, it's funny you say you want to talk about it because I have recently been thinking, oh, I need to get back into it. That's probably mm. because it's Royal Rumble month. But, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the one you always look out for. That's the one I always look out for. But, for, I mean, from what I've seen online and stuff, the, I mean, the reason I stopped watching WWE was because it... It just wasn't as engaging for me as it used to be. Like the, I think when you're when you're younger and you're watching wrestling, you're really in it for the storylines, yeah. and that's what kind of keeps you coming back for more. But when you almost get, like a soap, exactly yeah. that sort of thing. Um, when you get a bit older, I think I know this is for me anyway. I, I'm more interested in what they're actually doing in the ring, like telling the story from the moves that they're doing, if you like. Because yeah. um, that's actually the art of it, I think. But you know, no, I haven't any w watched any WWE for a while, but AEW are absolutely killing it. Do you yeah, watch any of the that. AEW stuff? Yeah, is that British? No, AEW is it's American company. Um, they started must, must have been last year now. Yeah, it was not not. not it's um, longer. Cody Rhodes, who is the son of Dusty Rhodes, yeah. started that all up. So it's nothing to do with it. WWE. It's a different yeah. company entirely, Something but they've got place. lots of the guys who used to wrestle in WWE now in AEW. That's oh, okay. Because I was what? From our era, or yeah, yeah. Really? I mean, Jericho is, on there. Really? Jericho is the main He's guy. The main yeah, guy. Oh, um, but they're they're being real competition for WWE. Oh yeah, that's what they're I mean. really they the ratings for WWE are all time low mm. at the moment. So. Really, the Thunderdome. Yeah, <laughs> that's. It. Do you think it will be something that they can just they just call it a day? They're just going to no, actually. WWE. No, WWE is no massive, mate. I know. I know. It, it, it will just get taken over. Uh, what are you saying? Or what are saying? And Stephanie, surely. Yeah, or Triple H. Or Triple H. Yeah, that's yeah, 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 that's yeah. That's sort of what I was thinking. But I was thinking, you know, if if there's a contender and they're sort of like, you know, we're not we're not pulling in the numbers we used to. Like, is it? Vince gonna... McMahon will never yeah. roll over for anyone. Really? No way. Yeah, he's, he's mad. He's been on top of the, on top of that for since we were kids, hasn't yeah. he? You know what I mean? He's yeah. Been, yeah, he's been in the game a long time. Yeah, a long time. yeah, it's yeah. fucking mental. I think uh, uh, the massive thing about wrestling is the same as when you mentioned about Tony Hawk's earlier. It's the music impact. Yeah, yeah. So sure. Motorhead mm -hmm. even said that, like I said earlier about the game, right? They he even said that Triple H had a massive part in introducing. Uh, motorhead to a new generation of fans. They were really good friends, Triple okay. H and Lemmy. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and just getting like that inspiration back and the motivation to start writing again. I think that was one of the main bits that Lemmy said, wasn't it? About um, writing the Triple H's main... Maybe it was you that said it to me. Then. Maybe, yeah, I think so. Because he did Triple H's and then Evolution, one for Evolution. Yeah, that's right, yeah. That's a hell. So yeah, that's Great cool. opener. You know, I mean, whose voice do you want to hear in your opening theme other than Lemmy? Like, it's yeah, the yeah best. that's very true. I mean, okay, so this comes... So I've got a question for you. Okay. You said you trained. What would your name be if you were a wrestler? Ooh. The Big C. <laughs> or you Bike. Yeah. <laughs> the Big C. What was it going to be? I don't, I don't know. What would I... I, had, I hadn't actually got to got that far Phoenix. as much of creating a character <laughs> as such. But um, I think... I think Big Man Bake. I like it, The Big yeah. Man. The Big, yeah. big Man. Yeah, could go with that. The, but I'm not the baker. The baker. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not particularly tall. Heights against me, so I'm. Yeah, but that, you could just be the baker. Yeah. Yeah. Be the butcher and we get a can of Gonna cook right? up a storm. Oh, yeah, you could, could make a up a, a whole band, faction, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then you could have, uh, you could be a part of a trio because you could have the butcher Look, and the candlestick maker. That's literally what we just, just said. Oh, is that yeah. what you just said? <laughs> <laughs> The the candles, candles, are you, you, you going to be the yeah. candlestick maker? I wonder why I heard that. I, just, I was all of a sudden overcome with inspiration. <laughs> it was Abdullah the Butcher, wasn't it? That's it. Oh, oh my gosh. Jeez. Yeah. So, so the big bake, is that, is that what we're going for? I think that would have to be it, yeah. The big bake. Sorry, think... sounds, like a, sounds like a new uh, BBC Two programme. <laughs> the big bake. It's not for a bake off, Jones. is it? Yeah, that's it. That's what I was sort of what I was getting at, really. Ah. I was, was uh, going to say about AEW, I was kind of caught a little bit on, um, it's on ITV, isn't it? Yes, they do. Oh, yeah, they do have some on ITV. They do the replays, don't they? I think. Yeah, and then I saw um, Jack the Snake on there. 
Yes, he's There's been, he's been fe- and Arn Anderson on there as well. Who's Arn Anderson's on oh, there yeah, as well. Yeah. Oh, um, have you seen Peanut Butter Falcon? <laughs> no, well, have you what? seen Peanut Butter Falcon? <laughs> no, but I know about you it. You know about it, right? Oh, so it stars Jake the Snake Roberts. Doesn't star him, but he's in, he's in it. <laughs> Doesn't have Shia LaBeouf in it. Yeah, Shia LaBeouf's a star. And basically, it's about a little boy. It's not a boy. He's a man who's got Down syndrome in America. And he's he wants to be a wrestler. And he breaks free from his care home that he's left in because he wants to be able to take care. Honestly, it's a real film. It's fucking no, it, great. It's supposed to be a good oh, film, actually. It's such a good film, really man. Good, yeah. It's so one of the best films I've seen in a long time. Do you and think Shia LaBeouf is on the run. And this guy is obviously on the run from his care home. And he basically becomes friends with him. And he, he's got an old videotape that's like 10 years old of one of his, like, like a, a like an in, uh, independent wrestling company that yeah. this guy set up, and somehow this 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 disabled guy's got the tape, and he watches it, and he wants to meet this guy. So Shayla LaBeouf's going to Florida to go and meet whoever he is on the run, and on the way he's come across this guy. I won't ruin the story for you, but anyway, he's come across this guy that's got Down syndrome, and they basically make the journey together, and he says he'll get him to this wrestling camp. Anyway, when he gets to the wrestling camp, it's got Jake There's the Snake Jake Roberts, Roberts and uh, Mankind in. Nice. Yeah, it sounds better uh, than zombie beavers. I gotta say, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> those sexy don't, beavers don't again. Knock it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> knock it. So I've seen some really sexy beavers in my time, mate. So. <laughs> <laughs> those so massive guess, teeth. <laughs> so I guess, yeah, Great about. pair of teeth. So, <laughs> I, know, I, think, I understand. We're probably going to wrap up the wrestling talk, but Ben, Royal Rumble winner this year. Who's it going to be? Oh, yeah. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. Like, <laughs> Ray Mysterio. <laughs> Oh, Roman Reigns. <laughs> Machine, Gun, <laughs> Machine Gun Kelly. Machine Gun Machine Kelly. Kelly. <laughs> oh, so I like when... Um, oh, who's that new Japanese guy that... I can't, I've never pronounced his fucking name. He was really fucking good. He Rikishi. Won it, he won it last year. It's not Japanese. Shinsuke Nakamura. Nakamura. Shinsuke Nakamura, yeah. Yeah, he's good. Yeah. Shinsuke. Um, oh, oh, yeah, I don't know. Braun Strowman. But this is a thing I don't get. Oh, we're yeah, about, you're, we're yeah, about to wrap up like the rest think, of Yeah, like Braun Strowman, I think. Yeah, maybe Brock Lesnar will return again. Oh, yeah, maybe, maybe. <laughs> the Take excitement. Up, what were you going to say, Lawrence? Yeah, so we're like wrestling. The one thing that I don't get, everything's scripted. So, like, you know you're going to lose before you go out yeah. and do what you're going to do. So like, I'll just do my head in. Like, yeah, no, but I so don't there's. Know. Yeah, you have a script, and like you say, and you'd know the, who's going to win the match. That right. Tells the story, but yeah. it's about. What you do in the ring, that's what they kind of improvise. The rest is they go out there and, and they call it, they go out there and play. Like they've got mm. no, they don't know what exactly they're going to do, but they know what each other can do. They know where they've got to get to in the storyline. Oh, okay, like, I like, see. Telling each other, like, like close on anymore. Oh, right, I see. On the slide without everyone knowing, it's kind of, it's like, very oh, interactive. It's an art, it is an art yeah, in doing it itself, inside. isn't it? Knowing which camera's looking at you as well. Yeah, and people also. bad at it, I'm, I'm Botchamania. Yeah. The dog too much. <laughs> yeah. When people are too loud, and then, yeah, it's just like John Cena's bad at that, isn't he? Very bad. <laughs> what, uh, uh, what they're, they're doing what? Spot calling. Spot so calling. that's where you can hear them set, talking to each other. In the oh, ring. really? Yeah. So, like, for example, if, if you say to someone, frog splash off the top rope, that's a spot, <laughs> right? Right. So. If you heard, say, John Cena saying that to RVD, Rob Van Dam, yeah, yeah, yeah. Teddy Bear, or whatever, so that it might have picked. Oh, so it picks out. Thanks for that, John. Get the chair. Get the fucking chair. Table. Smash me, bro. Smash me. Uh, yeah, I guess uh, to finish it off, what favorite wrestler all, all time. All time. Yeah. Oh my god. Any promotion. Any promotion. Oh god, on the spot. Um, I like the three faces of Foley. I gotta say, dude, love yeah. mankind, Cactus Jack. Cactus Jack. I loved all that stuff. <laughs> I but couple, I suppose my favorite all-time wrestling character isn't an actual wrestler. I would say Paul Heyman for me, oh, just because right, yeah, he's yeah, yeah. so good on the mic. Yeah, you can, is he like a? Uh, he's like a manager, uh, an advocate, as he calls like himself. RJ. Is that J- his name? Oh, J- J- R- R- J- R- what are you thinking, AJR? Hey, That's all I remember. Sorry, RJ. So JR's an announcer, so he's like a commentator. But um, Paul Heyman's like if Brock Lesnar's MC, if you will. Brock Lesnar's yeah. MC, really? Yeah. Okay. Man. Yeah, exactly. Brock. <laughs> 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 cool. Right. So that's uh, that's yeah, our rest. Remember, this is New Jack. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. New Jack. New Jack. Um, he is a nutcase. He's, he's a fucking nutcase. But he could, he was good at telling a story in a ring, and he's just really entertaining. He's yeah. Guy. I don't really know that much about wrestling. He's wrestling in TNA now. Yeah. Um, I used to. I used to when I was when at school. Kids, but so. Yeah. So. It scared me. It scared me. It's catchy. That was when we were all wrestling on trampoline, wasn't it, Nigel? You couldn't, you couldn't keep up with us. <laughs> We'd fight you up with a bike helmet. <laughs> that didn't actually happen. I never got touched by a bike helmet. <laughs> I'll never remember. I'll never forget this time. <laughs> I'll never remember this time. I'll never forget this time. We were 
I think we were hanging out in Nova somewhere and um, you went off on someone's moped and you left the visor. Oh, oh my and God! And a wasp flew in your visor. Shit is... Oh, that was <laughs> so funny. <laughs> Mate, he smashed this moped I remember you up. running up to us <laughs> going, Connor, going, guys, shit's hit the fan. <laughs> I was like, what? No, I just hit the fan! <laughs> like, what? Yeah, it's because it's it's basically the story is this guy, we went to school with Sean. I was about to say, God bless his heart as if it's... <laughs> I was about to say, God rest his soul. God bless his soul. I don't know why. Obviously, obviously I didn't. I didn't I realize what I was about to say. But yeah, anyway, he let me have go on his moped. I wanted to put the visor down. I just couldn't. Un- he was like, just don't put the visor down. I did not understand why he wouldn't let me put this visor down. And I'm not good at stuff going in my eyes. So. <laughs> I don't, anyway. I don't actually blame you for that. I don't think anybody's good at that. Oh, no. bro. No, well, no, like, like, I'm people. especially like, especially bad. Like, so he told I, him I not to put that. the visor down, which I, sort of is the, the, the catalyst. Which sure. therefore it wasn't really my fault. Like if you ask me, but I was the riding wasp. behind him on my moped. Right. So I was driving down this fen road. Right. So we're going on the, <laughs> into the middle of nowhere. Nigel's going, wait, wait, what, like as 20, fast as you can go on a moped. Right. <laughs> And we're going down it, and I've just seen him jump off the bat, but he's holding the handlebars going, ah, 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 and he's still revving, <laughs> holding onto this bike, and he's just let go, this bike flying along in the upright position. And I just, ah, 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 it's in my fucking eyes, it's in my fucking eyes. It's like, oh my God, Nigel, what's going on? And I was looking at Sean's moped, it's on the floor, smashed up to the back, I was like, oh my fucking God. So I've got to ride back. Nigel's, mo- the moped now doesn't work, or something's no, wrong. No, the moped it. still worked. Well, there was something, wrong with it it, it was, was like one of the pla- it was like one of the plastics it wasn't like massively massively bad either <laughs> oh, to be God. fair like it could have been like a thousand times worse. I could have broke my arm or something <laughs> oh, I could it have was died. Just, it was just fucking oh my god that <laughs> poor boy <laughs> you know when sake. you invest in something that you really want to pay a lot of money let's for not talk about it anymore yeah. let's not get a DM in the morning <laughs> or after, oh yeah sh- by the way yeah you still owe me that <laughs> Big Ten, explain oh, yeah. to the explain to everybody about Big Ten. Oh, Big Ten, one of the best local bands there is. You yeah, know, they, I mean they don't play originals, they play all covers, but they're they're so good at what they do. They yeah. must they've been going for how long now? Years, years, and, years, and before like, that they were in actual ska bands, like their own ska. Yeah, bands. yeah, sure, but they they are so good at what they do. Like, yeah, they've got such a back catalogue of covers that they do, and they're just fantastic yeah Great. and it's and it's such good dance music isn't yeah. it like you can just yeah, yeah, yeah. proper bop to oh them. you can't stand still if they're playing yeah and it's um uh, they're just like so to anyone that doesn't know they're sort of like the specials bad manners and, no, and that sort yeah. of stuff and when we were younger the proper two-tone stuff like and it's always a recurring thing in, in the podcast which is that there's fuck all going on in Cambridge and never is there <laughs> Like, I mean, there is, unless if you know where to find it, which we're obviously gradually finding more and more as we get older. Um, but when we were about 15, 16, obviously you're a couple of years older. And then um, we basically started, you know, smoking roll-ups and fucking a little bit of weed here and there. And then you're getting beers and we'd go out in Cambridge, but you couldn't go to a pub or you couldn't do them sort of things. So we used to go to Big Ten gigs. And uh, we used to just go there and get put on our like Doc Martins, our Harrington jackets, <laughs> yeah. braces. And go, braces, and go up there and just go and fucking skank out all night. And we used to love it because they used to play like a, a proper set and then have a break and then play another proper set. So we're talking like probably 35 songs probably. Yeah, here, probably aren't we? Like, so, by end of oh my God. And these guys sweating. are like your dads, aren't they? They're yeah. like the typical, you'd imagine, older men, that are like sort of on the weekends, they're just still going out to play the music because they love it. And I've got so much time for that because yeah, like, that's not just a cover band, is it? Those no. songs to me are almost their songs. Do you Absolutely. know what I mean? Like when they yeah, play yeah. Fatty Fatty and like, um, oh my gosh. Uh, like uh, Simmer Down, all those songs that we're all so familiar with. I know it's all like, you know, uh, Toots and the Matles originals and things like that. Yeah. But at the end of the day, to me, they were Big Ten tracks because I just used to go and watch them, and yeah, they were yeah, it's who like where you heard them first, man. So yeah, yeah. you yeah. know, and and that was where it was for me, and that, that got me into that type of music. And then we went to see the specials in London. Oh didn't we? my god, that was so good. I know, I know. On and that was the day Anthony Joshua won his um, uh, gold medal in That's the Olympics because it, it was a closing concert for the 2012 Olympics. It was. It, it was yeah. uh, Bombay Bicycle Club. Uh, <clears throat> New Order. New Order. Specials. The specials. Blur. <laughs> What a lineup! That I know is. there was wicked, and I was we were privileged to go there. That's the thing about ska music, man. Is it's so like infectious. The people on stage, 
I mean, you can't help but have a good time when you're playing it. You can't help but have a great time when you're listening to it. Yeah. So it's like one big... <coughs> Everyone's in it together. Yeah, people on stage are the same as the people off stage, just with instruments, man. It's great. Everyone's mm-hmm. just enjoying themselves in the same bubble. It was so good, man. I, I, I That was a great time in my life, and it was a massively influential time in my life because ska, reggae, obviously, like, I love heavy metal. That's something that I push forward now, but that is such an influential thing on me that I don't really push so much now. But if anyone plays with me with an acoustic guitar... I always want it to sound like that. Mm-hmm. Offbeat, do you know what I mean? Like when we jam, oh, yeah, you know, know. It's, it's exactly like what you guys do with your sort of tunes. You can hear it come through in the tones, can't you? The, the influence is always there. Absolutely. Make yeah. a pack then, let's go. When, it's, when we're shit's done, big 10. Yeah, let's do it all together. Go out for a last night out. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be big five. Go, go, yeah. big, <laughs> big, medium five. Maybe we, can start, maybe we can start our own little ska band. Oh. I would love to. Oi, oi, oi. May I talk my language? (laughs) Oi, oi. Right, so um, one more musical thing before we get on to our... uh, Well, there's one more question after this, but the the thing is, which we have touched on multiple times, which is Will and the People, boys. Oh, where do we start? I know. That was so frustrating, wasn't it? That Getting that cancellation. I mean... It must have been all more frustrating for you, having, having said it all we, up. And yeah. We did feel pretty bad. We felt for you pretty badly because obviously, I mean, we've had the privilege of playing with them before as well. Yeah. And obviously when you guys put us on for that, but yeah. um, I know you was really looking forward to it. And yeah. They're such a great bunch of guys as well, man. Like, mm. I'm looking forward to seeing them again. Mm. Yeah, you know I know. I mean? And, it's, oh and we hadn't played a good gig in ages. Our like, last yeah. gig before that was pretty tragic yeah wrong literally wrong crowd wrong we went, environment. yeah we went and played we went, went and played to a house crowd like we'd play a song nobody would clap yeah the peak <laughs> situations made yeah, like there, literally like 35 <laughs> minutes but i just couldn't understand why because then afterwards i like, wouldn't get we're going to get like drink or like go to the toilet like people would come out to be like yeah that was really 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 good i was like yeah you tell me that now <laughs> what, what about what about then when we were playing what about then we've yeah. got so one time this is when we were with Edward Alice in the four piece. We played a gig so bad. You'll probably remember this. Well, you but we didn't it. even play badly. Like, we played well. Yeah, no, I'm sure. But this gig was so bad. Like, you'll, you must remember this. We were in Norwich and we got there and the guy who was running it said, oh, it's been cancelled. I just didn't message you, basically. What? <laughs> so we, we just got to Norwich and he cancelled gig. So instead of not playing, we went into the next door restaurant, didn't we? And just went around to all the tables and said... After your meal, if you fancy coming in oh, for some yeah, free right. live that was, music, that was you know, terrible. Come to, uh, a few people came in. Though, yeah, a few they? people came in, but it's just like once some once you get to a gig, man, and someone's like, "Oh yeah, basically we we just we cancelled it," and essentially they're saying we didn't care enough about you to just send you a quick message. Yeah, you're like, Norwich isn't exactly close, is it? No, yeah. and you're just like, oh yeah. fuck this from the very start, and then that just that just colours the rest of your night. Mm. Once you've had like a bad experience at the start, you're like, well, oh, this whole thing's going to be crap. I wish I was yeah. here now, yeah. Yeah, because literally we were playing. I literally felt like I was watching myself on like a CCTV, CCTV camera. I was not connected <laughs> to that performance yeah. at all. I don't even know how, how we got to the end. Like, I even took one song. I was like, all right, I'm not going to play that. <laughs> and that like, kills you, doesn't it? You're oh, like, man, it was horrible. Like, it was horrible. This next literally song driving going. back from... Nor- uh, from, de- from de- No, no, it was in Thetford. Thetford. That, that uh, was the last chicken. That was ours. Yeah, the, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, our, our, our bad one. But, yeah, so, yeah, it's just long. Yeah. you got to play the shit ones, though, to play yeah, the good ones. Yeah, no, That's sure. It. We're just, we were, we were very unfortunate that... That particular one. No, not well. even that. Like, in, in the year that we had up to then, we didn't really get much chance to play proper gigs. We I don't like, know. We played, we played, a, we played a lot of, de- no, uh, no, lot of decent, decent gigs. Realistically, we played less than 20 times as Bleed Easy. Yeah. Less yeah. than, like, we're, you know, it's, and, and sort of, it's, it, it was... There was a couple of gigs that you could pick out and say were really good. Like I remember playing Doc Martens, which was yeah, a small that was, crowd. That was, that was my of, favorite. I've one. Seen some clips of them, and, that's and it was great. great fun. And 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 that was a real small crowd, but it was a really good, engaging crowd. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then we had another one at Portland Arms, which was great. But apart from that, we've only had a handful. So it's sort of like we were, and now we're at the position now where we've practiced so much. We feel like we're at the point we actually want to show people our music. Of Whereas course. before we were just. We had songs, you know, yeah. and we were like, we're going to show these people these songs, but now we actually have a set. We have a performance that yeah. we want to give. Um, insane, yeah, yeah. And, and and that gig was going to be the one. That Will and the People gig yep. was going to be the one. The thing is, though, with the whole lockdown and everything, like, yeah, it's shit because you can't go and gig. But at the same time, like you just said, it gives you more time to kind of perfect your, your craft. Yeah. And yeah. Perfect yeah. your show. Yeah, and do the other things. Yeah. So sure. by the time we can gig again, you guys will have one hell of a show. Yeah, and well, and, that's it. and people will know where to go. There'll be music to find after the gig. It's not going to be like there's nothing to find, Rose. That's, that's the one issue we had before. before and, yeah. and that's going to be 
pretty much out out the window well, by the time we get to gigging us, again. Especially with you guys, as just Edward being a new entity, it, you'll have so many doors opening when life starts back up again. Same for us, for people to just be bang on it. You know? yeah. yeah, man. And one of the great things about being quite a, like a small outfit, just me and Christian, is that we can just pick up and go wherever we want, whenever we want. Yeah. We could drive 50 miles for an open mic. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It, yeah, There's so no organisation. It's just once all this is over, you just just a phone call. Do you fancy going? Yeah, right, let's go. Yeah. Right. yeah. It's not You don't have to organise five people. Um, Which we are quite fortunate yeah, with our stuff. Sure. But... Our stuff's quite niche. Mm. Not niche, but... Yeah, you couldn't d- drop it at a, a country open mic. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> whereas you guys could. Yeah. And you could also play at a, like a, a day festival which has hip-hop and your stuff on as well because you've got that flair that isn't quite just an acoustic duo. Whereas with us, when we turn up and we play Boogeyman at a fucking... <laughs> a small live set... the Bali like, Mo in. We came from... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, exactly. You know. <laughs> Thank you, War Beach. Where do I put my decks then? Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you can sit on the floor. Put them over there. Oh, by you the mean you don't kettles. have speakers? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so now we've got a couple of Bluetooth ones over there. <laughs> oh, great. This is going to be <laughs> so good. And also, we're heavily reliant on like a, a decent sound engineer as well. Of like, sort yeah, of yeah. how our music comes across. Like, obviously, Ben does his thing on the, on the decks and, and sort of can make, like, fuck the sounds up a bit. Not fuck, but as in, like, you know what I mean? Make Mess with sound the sounds to make it sound a little bit different to, like, put some echoes on, pause it a little bit, you know, sort of put, like, I don't know what the word is, like, a, uh, effectsy sort happening. of stuff. Yeah, just, just, yeah. Like, make you, it more of a live show rather than him just pressing play. Yeah, but that's. Got to be within the context of, of a decent overall sound, doesn't it? Yeah. Do you try and use the same engineer for gigs? Or do well, you no. Just this have... is something we want to do. Yeah. But to bring on a fourth member to always be reliant for us is meaning that we have to one a decent sound engineer will cost you money. We don't. Of we make no money. So what, how are we going to be able to pay yeah, for someone yeah. else to come with us unless they mm. were really invested in our project? Um, but it would make such a difference for us because, like, you know, when you want that certain reverb on your voice when you're performing and things like that, that person will know it. And, yeah, that's, yeah. and that's what we do want, but mm-hmm. we're just not in that point yet. We we just learned that you've got to, uh, <clears throat> you you don't want to be rude, but you've got to be insistent. Mm. If it's not right, don't finish the sound check. If someone's like, yeah, we've got to start in five minutes, but yeah, well, you're not the one about to step out on stage. Yeah, that's a good point. So yeah. like, give me yeah. some more reverb, please. Yeah. I mean, you've got to be nice, but you don't, don't have to start swearing and stuff. But at the end of the day, you know, if you've got a crap sound, the sound dude's going to go home at the end of the day. No one's watching him. Everyone's going to be going, this guy's shit. And you might not be shit. You just might not have very good sound. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's a very, very yeah. good sound. If anyone takes that away, if anyone takes anything away from this <coughs> podcast, I would take that because that's what I'm taking away from it. Yeah, for sure. You're so sure. wisdomous. Yeah, yeah, very wisdomous. <laughs> oh, that's my age. It's another thing I've learned. That's why I didn't need to say that much this podcast. You just, you've just been learning. <laughs> well, I've, just been, I've just been learning. So Soaking it up like a sponge. <laughs> I'm gonna talk to him about this next week too. <laughs> so the uh, the next part of the show is the the best part. part of the show. The best where part it of the ends. Show. No, I'm and, joking. Uh, I'm joking. And, and this is the, I'm joking, I'm joking. the last couple of times. There's almost been a little bit of jokiness to it, I guess. But um, with this one, it, it might still have a bit of jokiness it to it. But it's the joke. first time uh, that you're actually going to hear us perform live on the show, uh, and also going to hear the boys perform live, um, and uh, basically have a little bleed easy slash uh, nice. just Edward collab uh, and jam in front of these microphones. Phones. The sound might not be great, but we'll see what it sounds like. So let's fucking I mean, give it I'm, a go, I'm, shall we? I'm just going to freestyle, to be fair. Well, we'll give it a go and see what it sounds like. Right, so we've just set up the podcast studio. <laughs> We're now the podcast studio, the live setting. So we'll explain the situation where we are right now. So I'm on the on the mic. Thomas is on the mic. He's also got a ukulele. So Christian is on the guitar. We've got a little mic set in front of it. Hope that sounds okay. Uh, we don't really know what the sound of this is going to sound like. We've never done this before. It's very improv. Ben is uh, filming this all. Uh, so he's uh, using his technical... You know, he can do plenty of things. He's just got the technical skills. And Nigel's decided to actually opt to sit on the cajon, but I'm probably going to make him stand up and sing in a bit. So maybe for the last track. Right, so first of all, we're going to just start off doing a little Will and the People Jam thing. With a hot sardine lying on my sofa It's so easy Won't you come on over Cause I need you Lying in the thick of it Pretending not to give a shit 
don't know the words to this bit. They, they, they lend to what I sing, <laughs> but this is the thing. Yeah. So far, so good. <laughs> oh, I want you to come over, my friend. <laughs> Won't you come on over again? So we can buy some facts from the shops. Cause recently I've been on the run. Of it, pretending not to give a shit. The linger, break the linger, listen into what I sing, cause this is the thing. Just Edward, yeah, what, well, do a little, little should... solo? Yeah, let's Right, go on, boys. Solo. End the show on something really nice for us. Should we do our new song? Yes, please play us a new song. All right. It's a bit of a slow one, if you're ready for that. It's yeah, no, that's absolutely well, fine. it's not slow, but it's about... Um, I, wrote, I wrote a poem from working at this care home. Okay. Right. Interesting. Join this film yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can film it. Yeah. Wicked, Oh, guys. sick, I'm really looking forward to this. Actually, I'll get one. I'll just get this off me. Go on then, boys. <clears throat> Take it away. Introduce the song name as well, please. Tits up. Um, I think we should call it call it Rest. That's a good name. Yeah, thanks, mate. For an old people's home, you know. Don't be afraid to rest when that day comes Before though, fight the dark as hard as you can Don't accept your fate and gently fade away and The last thing you should feel is the grip loosen in your hands And don't be afraid to rest when that day comes And let what you grip on to be the reason you need to stay So that when you do finally leave your knuckles are seized And your palms are torn, your tendons are strained and your nails are gone so stay with me and I'll see you through oh, Lay with me and I will hold on to you if you want me to, yeah Stay with me and when that day comes and you're nearly gone mm, Don't be afraid to rest when that day comes Don't be afraid to rest when that day comes Make every effort to say no and keep the light burning while it burns brightly You will struggle and wane and it will appear unsightly But don't be afraid to rest when that day comes And don't be afraid to rest when that day comes Because after death there lies nothing mm. 
There's nothing shameful in this So it's peaceful there And there's nothing you'll miss So stay with me and I'll see you through Whoa, lay with me and I will hold on to you If you want me to, yeah Stay with me and when that day comes And you're nearly gone afraid to rest when that day comes yeah oh don't be afraid to rest when that day comes yeah. and you sit back on things that you love and can smile at it's easy the things you remember and when you hold on so tightly your fingers are numb yeah you won't be afraid when that day comes it's a struggle to get through and harder to let go and i will lay down on the bed and i'll say i know you've stayed long enough so rest now my love and stay with me and I'll see you through Whoa. Lay with me and I will hold on to you if you want me to, yeah Lay with me and when that day comes and you're nearly gone Whoa. Yeah. Don't be afraid to rest when that day comes, no Don't be afraid to rest when that day comes don't be afraid to rest when that day comes. Fuck yeah. yeah, that was seriously, seriously, wow. seriously. Well, sick. Got goosebumps, man. Oh, let me record that. I will <laughs> record that. For, I will record you. Honestly, boys, well, please well let done. me. Thank you. No, thank you. That honestly. is seriously, seriously sick. That's literally made my whole day. Honestly. Man. Oh man, that's hard. Man, that was. Seriously, that was oh, so much man. fun to watch. I, I mean, could like, listen to you all day. To literally, this close, usually I see you boys oh, when man. we watch you play in a gig. Fuck. But to see it in like just us boys in the room, that was too fucking kind. amazing. No, yeah. honestly, boys, thank you so much. And, um, and honestly, this, this podcast has gone on uh, longer than any other podcast and I've had such a good time doing it. But yeah. we unfortunately do need to round it up now. Um, but yeah. but uh, the next show will be coming soon. There'll be more info on that. As always, uh, look at our socials. Please, please, whatever you do, look at Just Edward on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. Follow their shit. They're going to do massive things. Yeah. They're going to be heavily involved in what we're doing with Sabotage. And we absolutely love everything that they do. Yeah. Um, and, and, and they're going to be a massive asset to the Cambridge music scene, we think. So yeah. um, honestly, if, if that doesn't just prove to you what they've just played to us on a one take, literally, that was there's no editing, nothing going yeah. on here. It was literally, they just played that out as one. One. Yeah. and our shoddy Sick. little attempt at trying to sing Bob Marley before <laughs> <laughs> we should have just let you do the whole I thing I don't think yeah. any of us did that justice no no right, no, no. I don't think anyone can do Bob Marley justice so I'm not going to lie um, but yeah I mean, yeah, no, that's sick. Yeah, no, I just want to say, yeah, thank you so much for coming down. Like, I've learned a lot. Like, I've said the, le us, I've said the least great. in this episode, and I've learned the most. <laughs> that's, that's a new thing I'm pra uh, practicing. But um, yeah, no, seriously, thanks for, thanks for coming down. Cool. Yeah. And hopefully, I look forward to working with you, Wink. Wink. I mean, <laughs> absolutely. We honestly, we're not flooded with offers at the moment, so. <laughs> Please, no, you should be. You should be. So uh, yeah, this has been the, the third episode of Fuck That's Loud. Thank you all so much for listening. Uh, big up everybody that's always supporting us. Like like I said about them, follow us, please, if you can. Follow our uh, Instagrams. Follow our Facebook. Uh, like our Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube. Keep up to date with it. If there's anything that you want to feedback on, uh, or if uh, like just anything that you want to talk to us about, or you want us to mention improve it in future episodes, please. Let us know. Honestly, it's been one of my favorite yeah. episodes so far out of the three we've done. <laughs> but um, no, honestly, guys, thank you so much for coming down. Uh, my name's Triple Six Steve. I'm Hybrid MP. And it's a wait, wait. We're just Edward. And it's a <laughs> and it's a wrap. <laughs>